Provo, Utah. This is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb Schweiss. And I am your other host, Joseph de Gaulier, and our guest, Caleb Craig. Da, da, da. Yep, today we're finally <laughs> going to be going over Final Fantasy VIII for you guys. But first, before we get into the game, let us first dedicate this episode to Luis Ribeiro. Or Lewis, whichever it may be. He is one of our great Patreon supporters, and he also sent us an email recently. It was that, a nice email. Uh, yeah. Told, told us how, how good the show was and everything. So. Yeah, that's thanks and a And how willing he was to support us on Patreon. Uh, we, of course, would like to remind you to support us on Patreon as uh, we're making our way to getting better Mixer and later on getting better games. I know I'm buying my games with my own money, but uh, at some point, you know... The Patreon could help um, support some of that. Right. This this podcast isn't free um, in any way. <laughs> well, for them it is. It is for them. That's true. Uh, and it, it, it just would be nice if you donated a dollar a month. You know, you get the episodes a day early. And, I mean, how much is it per episode, Caleb? If we only have four episodes, it's 25 cents to get 25 a day cents early. 25 cents for a dollar a month. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and if we do the commentaries, you're looking at, like, Maybe 20, 15 cents, depending on how many we do. So, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Uh, anyway, thank you, um, uh, Luis uh, Ribeiro, for your support. Uh, shall we move on to our review? Oh, wait. First, I do have to say that we are skipping news this week. So, if you were all excited about us talking about the um, the rumors surrounding Kingdom Hearts 3, um, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see just how rumory they are. Oh, I'm sure it's 100% rumory. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to the review. Let us. Final Fantasy VIII was released for the PlayStation in 1999, February 11th in Japan, September 9th for North America, and oh, October 27th. <laughs> it is. That's five months. No, seven months. Holy shit. And October 27th for Europe. I don't understand that. I've never understood why Europe doesn't just get it. Like they, I know they have to translate. Well, they still have to localize and to... Yeah, but they're... Sort of French and... Europe I don't know what countries get it in Europe. That's true. Europe Maybe that's always a big... gets it like I'm sure four months after us. It's true. France does. I'm not sure why. And Great Britain does. Well, I guess North America English is very big for America and Canada, which is a giant portion of. Actually, it's all of North America. <laughs> except for Mexico. The biggest portion. Yeah. Of North so maybe America that's why. Yeah. Maybe that's why it takes less time. Um. It's because it's one language, essentially. Well, Canadians, they get a different... No, they get the same NTSC. Same version as us? I think they do. God, that sucks. I'm not sure. Canadians, uh, you know... They always make up for it. Make them up for it, though. They With the international versions. Because they're like, let's <laughs> add something really cool for these poor bastards that don't get <laughs> to play it. Give it to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Screw this. That States. would be sweet, because we'd get it easily. Yeah. So anyway, the game arrived for PC... Uh, Windows, obviously, no Mac, in 2000. It has also been available on the PlayStation Network Store since 2009, and the game was developed and published by Square. Of course. Before the... This was before the merger. Pre-merger. We're still in the pre-merger games. Yeah, it's weird. And we will be until 10, I think. It says Squaresoft at the beginning of 10, but I think it was still published by Square Enix. Yeah, I think that's right around when they did it. Final Fantasy VIII's development began in 1997, while Square was working on the English localization of Final Fantasy VII. The beloved and treasured Hironobu the Gooch Sakaguchi (laughs) served as the game's executive producer. Producer? Producer. (laughs) 
Prezuder. While primarily the Gooch. <laughs> sounds painful. The Gooch. Yeah. While, Blood uh, Gooch. Aw. Aw. While primarily... Halo. <laughs> Blood Gooch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's what it's called. <laughs> it's the best map, in my opinion. Aw. Especially for sniping. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is. It's a really good one. While primarily working on his own demise, which takes the form of 2001's <laughs> Final Fantasy, The Spirits time. Within, <laughs> this lent the position of director for the game to Yoshinori Kitase. The battle system for Final Fantasy VIII was designed by Kitase and, of course, Hiroyuki Ito. Uh, we've done uh, specials on all three of those beings that it's we've true. just talked about. We know a lot about these guys now. <laughs> yeah. For the visual design, Katase knew he wanted a combination of fantasy and realism. He aimed to create a cast of characters who appeared to be ordinary people. Tetsuya Nomura and art director Yusuke Naora worked tirelessly to achieve this feel by creating realistically proportioned characters. Naora also attempted to enhance realism by bright lighting effects while creating appropriate shadows for the most part. There were a few parts where I was like, oh, the shadow doesn't go there. <laughs> But it is that is something that I did notice they added. Whereas in seven, you remember how it was just like a dot below them. I don't. I don't think I've ever paid attention to the shadows, but I'll just take your word for okay. it. Okay, there's it just like a that. circle below. Okay. Them. All right. Uh, they also use motion <laughs> capture technology to give the game's characters more lifelike movements for the FMV sequences. That's true. And if you go on YouTube and like type in the making of Final Fantasy VIII, you'll see. The sequence where the dance, the famous dancing scene, ballroom dancing scene where Squall and Renoa first meet, uh, that was motion captured by two, like, I guess, actors or dancers or whatever. And it's interesting to see them make that, that scene. It's nice. Pretty cool. So the designers felt compelled to invert the atmosphere of the previous games, which were themed as light emerging from darkness. This decision was easy for the team, since they almost all worked on Final Fantasy VII and felt the new direction was a good idea. Instead uh, of darkness, they chose light emerging from darkness? Is that what no, they're it, implying? I, I guess. I don't know. Because Seven was a dark game, I'd say, both visually and... Right, but uh, then they emerged from light emerging from the darkness, is what they were saying. There, were too much, there was too much of usage, usage of that theme. Okay. So they decided to change it, even though it's... Yeah. Okay. The world designs were improved from the last title <laughs> due to the experience the team had working within their graphical boundaries. Another part of the realism theme that Katase so desired was noted with the realistically inspired architecture for the areas. I mean, there was like ancient uh, Egyptian-style buildings and then also some Greek architecture, which we had seen... From uh, games as early as like three, of course we played the the DS version of three, so some of that did look like a uh, ancient Greek sort of stuff, like the underwater. Sure, I temple. can see that. Yeah, but I think eight did it a lot. Well, they did it before technically, since the <laughs> version of three we played came out later. So that's one way they tried to. Well, they could still do that type of design thing with the with the two D models. I mean, you can see it with Final Fantasy V and stuff like that. Yeah, you can see the design of of certain areas. Um, kind of what they're based on. So, I wouldn't say it was necessarily first with eight. Yeah, they they really stressed it though in development, and they we also see a nod to Paris like towns while also throwing a super high tech city in the mix to give a different <laughs> futuristic feeling to kind of go with this theme of realistic yet futuristic at the same time. So it's like taking place somewhere where we can believe. It's but funny how much as far. How, how much further ahead Esthar is in the oh, technology yeah. than anything further. than anybody else. Yeah. So how come Galbadia, or how come they're the bad guys? <laughs> yeah. But obviously they, they could be easily crushed. Yeah, they're like technologically inferior. <laughs> I don't know. And it's not like... Although they do have the three-pronged <laughs> drill prison. <laughs> that, is, that is true. <laughs> so, your mic when you talk. Uh, so in an attempt to maintain... A foreign atmosphere, the character design designs were predominantly European in appearance. The first Final Fantasy VIII character to be developed was Squall, 
Nomura gave Squall a fur jacket as a challenge to the game's FMV designers. Thankfully, they accepted the challenge, and the jacket looks realistic, even if it seems slightly out of place. Nomura also found a place for some previously designed characters, such as Idea, Fujin, and Raijin. Nomura designed Idea based on the style of Yoshitaka Amano. Final Fantasy VIII also you say, featured... You call her Idea? Idea, Idea. Idea. I call her Idea. Eh. It's not, like, it's not like we would ever We know. always switch with Cipher and Cipher, too. <laughs> That's true, we do. So... It takes the shit out of me, <clears throat> even though I do it myself. Yeah. So, Eight was also the first game in the series, and not the last, to feature a... I don't know. I don't even know how to word that. Like a an actual sang song, like with uh, lyrics. A theme song. A theme song. Yeah, like a like Titanic would have done a theme song. Yeah, but it's not the theme. And it, you know well, what? I I believe it. It's kind of from that too, because this was ninety ninety nine when this came out. Mm-hmm. Titanic was ninety seven, and of course, not that it was the first movie to have a theme song, but the theme song from Titanic was gigantic. That's true. <laughs> And so the idea is there's a lot of media, late 90s, early 2000s, has, there's a lot of stuff with theme songs, including like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon has a theme song in English. Wow. So it's, it's an okay song. It's much better than, <laughs> than what we're going to talk about later. <laughs> but um, it's interesting to see that kind of, that kind of effect that that yeah. movie had. And I think... I think that's part of this. Titanic was the biggest film in, that was released in Japan. Yeah, and I mean that's part of the that time frame. They're just really into that kind of thing, so I'm sure that's what what started this. <laughs> so the game received positive reviews and was also commercially successful, very much so. <clears throat> in just two days after the North American release, Final Fantasy VIII became the top selling video game in the U.S. and would remain in that spot for over two weeks. As of nice. March 31st, 2003, the game has shipped 8.15 million copies worldwide, and it was the fastest selling Final Fantasy title at the time. And is there one that beat it ever? I don't know. Or is it just the fastest selling Final Fantasy title? That's what I always thought it was. It was the fastest up to that point. I wasn't. I didn't look into it 100% to make sure, because I was like, I don't really care. I'll find out later. <laughs> but I know for a fact that all 8.15 of those, at least all the ones that came here, have sold at least once. So. Nah, it's, yeah, I don't see any new copies of eight hiding. That's anywhere. true. Yeah, I don't either. Maybe some green label ones. Mine is very like new, but it mm-hmm. was open. So I'm sure someone found it in shrink wrap and just was like, "Don't touch it." <laughs> yeah, so this is. But mine. they probably bought it off something. Yeah. So yeah, it's the the development. It's kind of interesting to see what they set out to do and. You know, the, the changes, we can definitely see that the theme of change was, it's very prominent in the game from 7. Mm-hmm. It feels very different. So. so, am I the only one who had beaten this game before? Uh, between the three Yes. Of us? Yep. Okay, so you guys, this is a first time playthrough all the way through for you all guys. All the way through, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and I've only beaten it all the way through once, but I've gotten to like late disc 3... Yeah, that like was five times before. So I felt like I've done this game many times. I've gotten to disc three before on my okay. one, one, one of my playthroughs. Okay. Like, so let me talk about the history I had with this game because it's obviously a little longer. Um, I, of course, if you listen to our first episode, I've talked about this. I got this game from a friend of ours called Dylan. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> That's what we call him. His name is something else, but we call him Dylan. Sure, we'll just call him Dylan in quotes. No, that's actually his name. Um, <laughs> we were friends for a while, and uh, I I had gotten a PlayStation 1 after, doing, after mowing some lawns and all this other stuff. I had no games to play on it. And so I borrowed a game called Final Fantasy, and I had only recognized the name Final Fantasy because I had once seen the Spirits Within trailer when we had gone and seen a movie at one point with my family sometime <laughs> back then whatever and so and so i borrowed the game from him and i was really really involved in the story but the gameplay was really confusing to me and it was hard for me so i gave it back to dylan eventually i went and was like and borrowed it again you know and then i got really into it again and i got near the end of disc one and then i didn't know what to do from there and I just bought the game off of Dylan. And 
I was, I think I was so surprised by how in depth. I now I never played any Final Fantasy game before, and my of course history with how many video games I played is pretty low, and so this this game was kind of blowing my mind that it was so story driven. It wasn't just like level driven like most other games I had played. Um, and so I think that's where my love from Final Fantasy comes from is actually from probably the disc one of Final Fantasy VIII. Now I did not know this very important principle of Final Fantasy VIII was that everybody levels up with you. <laughs> oh yeah. So although I knew that leveling up would help me get stronger, I didn't realize that it was also helping my enemies get stronger and have they get bigger stat boosts when they level up right. as opposed to me. And so I had my ass handed to me, and I three times I got to the middle of disc three when you're going into Lunatic Pandora, or I guess it's the end of disc three almost, and you fight Raijin and Fujin. I got to them three times. Mm. I restarted the game. I was like, did I do? I did something wrong, so I'll restart the game. Like that. That was my view, and this this is over a year and a half time, I think, maybe a little longer. Because I kept just getting coming back to this fucking game. <laughs> and I kept dying the shit out of me. But then I found once on this little forum, somewhere in the deep dark web, they level up with you. And so I found this challenge guide that was like, you know, uh, Squall on level 7, you know, challenge or whatever. Yeah. And so I did that, except I didn't do it all to the point, And I beat the game finally on level 14 but by then i was already into the final fantasy the other final fantasy games so i think it was like the uh maybe the third game that i beat in the series okay and so because i beat 10 and and 4 before i finally beat 8 Mm -hmm. which is ridiculous yeah (laughs) because i started on 8 so many years before uh so that's my history with the game like what how much of the game did you guys play before this playthrough. Well, I got to the end of disc two, the Fijin and Rujin fight at that portion of the game. The end of disc two is Fijin Fai and yeah. Rujin. <laughs> Which is also, I thought it was pretty difficult even this time. Like, because they, they spam attacks and Raijin... Just got to take out Waka. Or not Waka. <laughs> I guess. Waka. Well, yeah. actually, I took out... <laughs> the Waka inspiration. Yeah. I yeah. took the chick out first. Raijin, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's true. But uh, I took her out first because she kept doing a ton of damage. And then I actually had Quistus versus uh, Raijin. Okay. And since he's he doesn't he like doesn't believe in hitting checks, so he didn't attack me. Oh shit! That's right. I yeah. forgot about. So that. So I didn't. I killed her first, knowing that because he wouldn't attack her, and I just took him out because it was rough. Like they were, they do a lot of attacks very quickly. So should have used that. I got to I that didn't point know about before that until just now. Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I had known about it before, but I didn't think about it this way through. That's but yeah, so I, I had gotten to that point before, and I was also in the same boat. I didn't really understand the junction. I didn't understand the... Well, I mean, who who wants to go through a 20-minute tutorial about the junction system? Well, even when I Nobody. did, I, when I first played it, I was <laughs> I just like, always press auto-attack anyway, even now. But sometimes I'll do little specific things if I got a boss coming up. But Yeah, I mean, yeah. even... I was like... 13 or 12 when i played this the first time so it's like, a complicated game yeah it's young. not it's i couldn't figure it out i just <laughs> could not understand what the shit this junction thing was you know and uh so i i got to that point and i could never beat it no no never mind i lied i did beat them finally it took me forever like a sick amount of time mm-hmm. and i finally went back to it one day and was just able to beat them and then i got to cerberus and i couldn't beat cerberus near the end of this too yeah. yeah that's where i got to that's before you get to the the second fight with the dia yeah and you don't have to fight cerberus but i i, I needed to cerberus I, to. I remember being an, an extremely tough fight that i was stuck on he for is, a while but i wasn't able hard. to get past him he's a very good summon to have playthroughs yeah also. he is he's got some really good abilities Caleb? Off the bat. um i had played the game through and I didn't realize, like you did, I didn't realize that they leveled up with you. And so I, too, got well, the, stuck the, the, on the... The problem with that is that the game just becomes harder the the further you try oh, to beat the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. it doesn't even, like, warn you in any way that that's what's going to happen. Now, now, what we have failed to mention is that there is a point when the enemies stop leveling up. Not the random enemies, but the bosses will have a level cap. Yeah, but certain bosses have a level cap. High. Yeah, it's like yeah. in the 70s or 80s. But I will say, if you know what you're doing, it doesn't matter. So if I think if doing. we would have known what we were doing back then, we would have been fine. But we didn't. 
Because when I leveled up via my uh, my excursions to get the extra summons, which we'll talk about later, it still wasn't that hard for me. I, I had to restart a few times at the end just for various reasons. But if you do know what you're doing, I think the level up is okay. But that is also the part of the problem is with the junction system, no one knew what the hell was yeah. happening. So anyway, so yeah, I got stuck on the Fujin and Raijin as they were in the, the little hut by the ocean. Okay, you're, so the same part. That, yeah, the, the same part. The, like, that's where I got while. stuck forever because I didn't know that they would level up. And so I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. and then, so then I, uh, I just like stopped playing it for a while, came back. And then just really, like, after I realized that you shouldn't level up, I was, like, plowing through it. And then I, like, got to the third disc and then just stopped. Just stopped for no reason? Well, I I stopped and then, like, I have this thing where my brother or sister will always just delete my saves randomly. When you lived with them. Yeah, when I lived (laughs) with them. So, like... Say, I have this thing. Unless they're coming over to your place right now and being like, fuck you, Caleb. (laughs) Delete. (laughs) Yeah, so that was always a problem. So I've I've played eight multiple times trying to like beat it, but then just no. Yeah. But then this time I did. So yeah. Well, was it your first Final Fantasy or your second? It was my Are second you, after seven. Okay, I, I let him borrow seven first before I gave him eight because. Okay. Well, it was my first. For him. It was my first, and I, I think I'm one of the many people who Final Fantasy it was their first Final Fantasy. It's pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah. You should definitely say that into it's the pretty mic. popular to be your first Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> um, so this time around, for me, uh, I'd have to say after playing this game, although I'd only played it to completion once, I've gotten to the end of this three. I feel like millions of times. Yeah, I, I have a PC game that I that I started last. I don't know, last year at some point. Yeah. And I was just trying to get everything, which I still need to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's there. I mean, I'm, I've restarted this game like a billion times. I have to. Uh, so playing this game this time around was a bit of a chore for me. So as we go through this review, I just want you to, you listeners, to realize that I have played this game a million times. And some of the scenes for me were, they weren't fun for me anymore. To pl- watch these cutscenes that I have, that I swear to God, I know the dialogue of when it comes up. <laughs> and it's a big game to like know what people are gonna say. That's not <laughs> chicken wuss. It's not cool. Or, you don't want to be a boy anymore. Like, yeah, shit like that. I remembered that. I I'm remember not a that boy. Part. <laughs> I'm a man. Damn it. Uh, so, you know, just keep that in mind. You guys are on, of course, this is your first time playing through the complete game. Though, yeah. Though you've both played considerable amounts of it. Yeah. 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 Well, sort of. But... Sort of, yeah. <laughs> Dis when, two. Once I finally beat it, no. I realized that I didn't get very far, <laughs> but mm. lots of time. The thing is, my brother-in-law, or my ex-brother-in-law, I guess now, uh, my sister's ex-husband, who became a prostitute cheating piece of shit, <laughs> by the way. Uh, his name is Spencer. He's an asshole. Um, and he cheated on my sister with prostitutes. Really? Yeah. I don't even know how to fight a prostitute. You Neither thought. do I. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't know. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, he borrowed the game from me and he just leveled up and shit. He played it like a normal game and he beat the game just fine. I guess he understood the junction system. I was super jealous of him. He must have. Yeah, he must have. He must have actually went through the tutorial and was like, oh, yeah, I get it. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah, piece of shit. (laughs) I hate him even more now. It's because of that. So you players out there, if you're having trouble with Final Fantasy VIII, that's the problem. That is the problem. The game is the easiest game to play ever if you try to not level up. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You get the break spell, you use it on the enemies that you're forced to play against. Sometimes you're forced to play against other things, and you know, the most you'll level up is to like level 12. Yeah, get Diablos early, get, get, a, Diablos get early. A Encounter None as quickly as possible. Get Diablos as soon as you get the magic lamp. Yeah, like yeah. do that. That's Blind him. Do. Blind him and you shall win. Yes. So, the first thing we hit is the fire cavern. Oh, yeah. In the game. Um, a test for seeds for, uh, uh, what do you think seed even stands for? I don't think it even really has 
a thing. They're just the, like it's a school. It's a mercenary C- school for teenagers. Yeah, this school is called Garden. I don't like. <laughs> Are they growing the seeds? I think. But then, yeah, but, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It is called garden. You're right. Yeah, I didn't. I never made that connection. I feel like. Are you an serious? Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> there's seeds in the garden. I get it. <laughs> yeah, but then it's like they're growing. Like they're growing the seeds, but like the seeds are like the elite class. Why aren't they called like the plants yeah, or the flowers? The why are they like? Why aren't the students called the seeds? And then like. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, it's like oh, weird. Oh, because they plant the seeds in in innocuously or inconspicuous. I don't know the word I'm looking for. <laughs> the, they plant the seeds, and then those seeds will kill everyone. Yeah. Yeah, assassinations, you know. So they're like weeds, like powerful weeds. Yeah, can, maybe powerful weeds. Drown out the sun for other plants. The grass. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it means, but why is the D capitalized? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Capital S, lowercase e, lowercase e, capital D. Uh, C, D. Maybe it's C, D. I don't know. C, D. You're supposed to hit the D really hard. Isn't it interesting? Does every single person have Ifrit, though, when they have to do the test? Yeah. So every So there's like a billion freaking Ifrits. How come I don't have four Ifrits that I can... There's not a a billion Ifrits. You just get the ability to junction him. You get to use him. You can't have multiple people having Ifrit. The test was to go out and get Ifrit. Yeah. So, like, everybody having the ability to junction Ifrit would just be like, well, hey, can I borrow this guy for the weekend? I really need him. <laughs> well, I I don't know. I think it's more... I'm not sure how that I think works, it's intended no. to be more like... I know uh, Squall already has Shiva and Carbuncle. Yeah. Well, no, it's uh, Quetzquatl and Shiva yeah. and... Uh, Quetzquatl, sorry. Quistus gives him to him. But I think it's... It's on his computer already. You download it. You get Shiva from Quistus. Oh, is that right? Okay. Before you go, she's like, Harry might need this. Okay, are you... Okay, whatever. I'm pretty sure that happens. I thought you had to go upstairs, check on the computer, and then GF information for Squall, Shiva, and Quetzquatl. Maybe. I don't remember. Maybe she just tells you to use Shiva. But anyway, I, I feel like... She the, does tell you to use Shiva against different... I feel like fire. the sure. intent nice. of the summons is the same as any other game. You defeat the summons in battle, and you get the ability to use the summons. Kind of like in 10. So maybe the other people with their tests, they had different creatures that they were fighting against. Either that, maybe. or it's always Ifrit, and you can just summon Ifrit for that short amount of time to do that damage, and then he goes away. Yeah, but you have to junction the... You have to, like, bond with the GFs in order to use magic. Right, well, maybe it's not necessarily so, a physical bond. <laughs> even though it should be, because you I, are physically if, placing it, No, it's there. gotta be a physical bond, because they take up space in your brain. That's how they get rid of your memories. <laughs> Yeah, it's something inside of you, but yeah, it, does, it doesn't explain it in a biological way in the game. It, it refuses to do that. Maybe <laughs> it kind of does. It does say something about them being in your mind, and then yeah, like that's yeah. where it's like. <laughs> yeah, I know. They say they get memory problems because of GFs. Because like, they take a up a, they take up the space in your so brain. So they all forget like, that they're related. <laughs> yeah, they in, like in t- the past or, or not, not re- related, but <laughs> they were all raised in the same orphanage. Yeah. So I think I think that it's meant to be something like that. Like you unlock the ability to use them. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of weird, though, because it is the fire cavern where they just have like multiple like fire spirits or GFs yeah. that people have to get other than Ifrit. I'm fine with them all having Ifrit. That doesn't bother me. I can see where it can because you're actually it looks like you are physically junctioning them to someone. But maybe it's like some something more on the spiritual end. I love how their first test to become seeds is to fight like a giant fire demon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, level one. <laughs> <laughs> Level seven. We're not gonna level seven. Yeah. Oh, level, level seven. We're not gonna yes. lie. This job is gonna be a pain in the ass. So we might as well just throw you in right now. <laughs> they, she, he has the teacher with him. It's true. Yeah, and he's got the hot Shiva teacher. Jung. Oh man, hot, hot teacher. God <laughs> damn, son. Yeah, she is our. She comes uh, to get you in the beginning. <laughs> she is our pinup girl. You know what's funny? The first few times I played this, the game, I didn't even realize. Ellen was like at the very beginning. She goes, "Hello, Squall." Like, you know what? Yeah, Neither did I. The, for the, through I, the window or whatever, and then it's like, "Oh, forget that ever happened." I knew that was her like the entire time. I thought it was supposed she to was be like Quistus. wearing the same stuff. I was like, "Why, I is her, later, why are her clothes completely I different?" I think probably my third or fourth playthrough. I'm like, oh, "Okay, I know who that is." But the first couple times, I didn't even notice her. Like it was just kind of a weird thing that I just forgot about. Mm. Yeah. Me too. This time, until yeah. I saw it again, and I was like, "Oh yeah, she was there. She's just there." Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ellen shows up when you're in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, at the very beginning. At the very beginning. Well, she was there the whole time, though. And the school, remember, you go find her later. Yeah. She's just there. Yeah, I know she's at the school, but it's just kind of weird. That yeah, she's, she's just kind of hanging out. So we meet again, and then... Yeah, it just takes off. Then Quistis comes in, and of course, she's the giant distraction, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. Well, after you, of course, beat the fire demon... <laughs> You uh, go on your first mission with uh, Douchebag Cypher and Douchebag Zell. Yep. And uh, The blonde squad. And you're in the middle of this war with the Galbadians. They're fixing some kind of tower, and you're just, you're just there. So it's a, <laughs> like a satellite tower so they can have communications, because apparently they don't have TV or radio anymore in a super high-tech well, advanced it's world. Well, because Adele's... Um, Adele's uh, ship thing is blocking the signal. Yeah, but they got it working. Like, yeah. they did get it. I don't understand it then. Yeah, that's I, what they said later on in the game. Yeah, they said that like it doesn't work, but then they get it working, and then why doesn't everybody just have that? I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, <laughs> so Biggs and Wedge are up there fixing the satellite dish. You guys uh, you shove a sword up their ass. And <laughs> Cypher runs Biggs away. And Wedge. Cypher comes back. Uh, he's a douche, and then a uh, big spider comes down from uh, the wild, wild west, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a super hot scene where Quest just, just blasts the shit out of the thing, which oh, is yeah. amazing. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, that like, was pretty oh. sweet. <laughs> I don't know, where were you guys when you were playing just the beginning, I'd say this is the beginning three or four hours of the game. If yeah, you, it is. If you've never played it before, it takes about that long. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what what were your first thoughts, uh, the first half of the first disc, I'd say? Just as far as where is this game headed? I had no idea where that game was headed the first time I played it. Yeah. Like, uh, it said, like, it was a love theme, and I was like, is he going to be hot for his teacher? Because, like... Because <laughs> I am, you Because, know? <laughs> yeah, because I was. Should have been. She, and she was into him, so I was like... Right, after... Let's, let's get this going, like, come after on. After the part with the girl... Galbadians, and you go back, and of course there's the dance, and you dance with Renoa, and then there's the Quistus part. And it's like, yeah. oh, oh, this must become a story where he chooses between Quistus and Renoa, but then he doesn't. But really, the Quistus love story <laughs> it doesn't it, it just didn't falls even matter. Yeah, the like face of the planet. Yeah, he doesn't even give a shit about like the hottest chick in that game. <laughs> <laughs> I think Renoa. I mean, we are talking about CGI characters here, but Renoa, I think, is very pretty. Yeah. I, we She's did no choose Quistus, Quistus though. though. We did choose Quistus. And Quistus beat Tifa. Quistus. She's got a whip. She does have a whip. <laughs> it is nice. So after that, obviously there's the inauguration scene, which is, like you said, where we do meet Renoa. Right. After the, they have their little after party. Mm-hmm. And then the famous dance scene that you did talk about in pre-production. They... Is anybody else confused about the dance scene? Like, uh. what exactly happened? Okay, let me explain here because at the beginning she's like you're the best looking guy here come dance with me and then he's like no <laughs> like a piece of shit yeah she's a very cute girl just walks up to squall whatever well hey he's ignoring uh Quistus's advances that's true like what the hell's wrong with squall he's gay I mean, he doesn't want to come close to anybody i get that's that's actually what's supposed to be wrong with Squall. Is that that's his character flaw? Is that he doesn't allow himself to get close to anybody because his sister left her or whatever? What I think it's because he's gay he for Irvine. <laughs> there are many I people that uh, believe that fan fiction. Oh, oh, fan uh, fiction. oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. That, that's right. I was getting something mixed up there. Um, what confuses me about that scene is that they try to start dancing and then Squall sucks ass at dancing. Yeah, and then suddenly and then he's really a, awesome at it. Th- there's a fade and then he, they're both dancing awesomely. And then at the end she's like, oh, you're amazing. Or, or excuse me, Qu- Quistus at the end is like, oh, even that dance was perfect. I'm like, did you watch the beginning? Yeah, like he, he sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was always confused about that point. Like what uh, what happens? With that I, dancing, what, like I know it's a famous scene because it's a gorgeous cutscene. It is, yeah, it's a gorgeous cutscene. Probably one of the best looking cutscenes. Well, he, he does it, tell Renoa that it's because like he needs to blend in. Uh, I don't, I don't know where you're quoting that. No, it's like she's like you, you're a really good dancer, and he's like, yeah, well, like I got oh, yeah, blend we're in. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. trained to blend in, but so he, like this is part of it. But at the beginning, he blew ass. <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, he's like, a fast learner. He just he just remembered his training. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess unless <laughs> unless like at the beginning he's supposed to be like trying not to dance, 
Maybe. It's like, no, I suck. He, he just wants, yeah, he me. just wants her to go Pretty away. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell's wrong with you, Squall? Like, seriously. Yeah. So I was always confused about that, but you're kind of always won over with that cutscene just because it's, you know. It's, it's, so, good, it's, it's a nice cutscene. A, a beautifully animated cutscene with the fireworks and everything. And with Renoa, I think. And it's, a great, it's a great scene to come back to. I mean, they... That's the scene when they did the PS2 um, like technical uh, yeah. test or whatever. Um, that's that's the scene that they remade. Um, so it's it's interesting that that scene is one of the scenes in Final Fantasy that people come back to all the yeah. time. But yet I still don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just looks good. I guess. Uh, but of course, you meet Renoa later when your first uh, real mission, after your first mission, when you actually become a full-on mercenary, Squall. Uh, did you guys name him Squall? Yeah. No. I did. No. What'd you name him? I called him Bitch. You called him Bitch. <laughs> I did call him Bitch. So why did you call him Bitch? <laughs> because I thought it would pay off, and it totally did. <laughs> In what way? I would like to hear. Uh, like there's a part near the end where they're like. Uh, we gotta think about the future or something like that. And then, like, they say his name. And so it's like, bitch, we gotta think about the future. <laughs> so comic relief. <laughs> Pretty much. It was, like, always funny. Whenever they said his name, they were just always like, bitch, then. <laughs> so I, I always feel that on the first time playing through a Final Fantasy, I always want to name him the actual name of the character. At uh, least I, on the first time. I usually just do. But I, I, play, I, uh, I always do that, too. I played but... this game, what, seven times? <laughs> I, so, I played it enough that I was just like, yeah. And so I, I, I called him dad. <laughs> and then I called nice. Renoa mom. How'd that work out? So I wish mom was here. <laughs> Where's dad? And like, people are always seeking dad's approval. And it's, they're always yeah, looking they for mom. It's really funny. <laughs> they gotta go get mom. I would suggest mom and dad for the uh, for the the names of the characters if you ever want to play. It's it's pretty funny. Though bitch does sound pretty funny. Oh, it was mom. great. <laughs> the best thing we got this from from Spoonie, uh, the Spoonie Experiments review. Oh yeah, he called him emo git. Yeah, because you know Squall is an emo git. He called but Renoa he, a whore he too. He called Renoa a whore, which makes some. I did call Renoa a whore on my last playthrough just to see it, and it makes some of the funniest lines. Yes, it does. You're and a whore's father. You're a. <laughs> <laughs> There's that, and then, and and then, then he you, called the dog anal. anal. Yeah, a whore's limit break uses anal. <laughs> The it's anal like, rush, anal <laughs> cannon. <laughs> <laughs> so I have used that. I've used both of those, and it is hilarious <laughs> yeah. to mess with the names on that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you, of course, went with Squall, right, Caleb? Yeah, I kept it the same. I yeah, you just didn't want to. You wanted unadulterated Final Fantasy VIII action. Yeah. Okay. As unadulterated as I could possibly make it. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that. You call I, I would call the inciting incident in the game the dance scene when he first meets Renoa, and then probably, um, you know, the point of attack is when he finds Renoa again. And he's of course working for Renoa, yeah. but Renoa kind of goes from being his boss um, for like you know because they're trying to you know let Timber um, be independent or whatever. Yeah, he goes from being her boss to like they're just a team. And that was never really fully explained. Yeah, <laughs> she's she just, just like eh, she I'll, just kind of accepts I'll his take leadership the back seat here. Yeah, I'm paying for this whole thing. But... <laughs> I mean, he could kill her at any point. It's a mercenary. I guess I don't think that. Well, she's paying. Think he would no, he wouldn't. But um, that's interesting. Um, so I feel I really feel like the center of this game is a love story, and it's not so much about the politics. Um, surrounding sorceresses, although that becomes a huge part. Yeah, it's like a huge part. Um, or the Gal- the Galbadians, or the Lunatic Pandora, the Lunacry. I don't even... I think that's, that stuff is all background to a what Square would like to think of as a grand love story. Now, we each have our opinions on that, and we'll get to that yeah. later. Um, but I think that's part of the reason there's so much love for this game, is because... Now, we're talking 1999 here. Uh, You know, games are still growing and have grown since 1999 as far as how in-depth their characters and stories can become in a video game. Mm -hmm. Um, 
still a new art form, so it's yeah, still got it's so. still got room. Um, but I think Final Fantasy VIII is probably one of the best examples of a love story in video games. Anything before it, I don't think. I don't think there's really anything before Final Fantasy VIII. No, not really. <laughs> I mean, besides, you know, the only the only thing that could really compare to it is probably the other Final Fantasy games. I mean, you got Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy VII that have love stories in it, I guess. But Final Fantasy IV's love story is already there; like, it's not even part of the plot. And then VII's yeah. love story is hidden, kind of. It's kind of hidden, and it's not really the focus of the game. It's interesting that they took a love story. And maybe this is just my opinion. I think that the love story is the story of Final Fantasy VIII because it's about Squall. His the arc of the story is Squall opening up to someone else, you know. Yeah. And so that that being Renoa. So I think that's the overall the overall arc, and that the other stuff is just background noise. Um, not really background noise, but it supports the story in, in a way. Well, there's like other and love things like, going on. I feel on like a lot theirs. of the legacy and a lot of the fan love for the game comes from the fact that it's a love story. I mean, and we'll, and we'll get to how we we feel about the story later. Um, I don't. Do you guys feel that way, or do you guys feel like there was another focus? Because I know that's that's what he meets Renoa once again, and of course she becomes part of the team. And then at the end, he's searching for Renoa, and at the very end scene, he kisses Renoa uh, for the first time. Like, do you guys feel like there was a different focus here? No, no. There's not really a, another focus. It is love focused, but I think the other love stories that go on in that game are better. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, there's the love focus between like Laguna and. Uh, and rain after the whole um and then the pop singer what's her name yeah the uh, scarlet no that's not right <laughs> I, don't remember. I don't remember her name <laughs> i don't remember her name either oh uh, that sucks <laughs> and then there's she's the, the piano player at the bar and then she writes julia it. julia got oh, it that's right and then there's uh Ooh. the love thing between uh sid and adia I guess there's Cause, a... Because th- they got, like, split up. There's some kind of... Uh, and then he has to, like, force the seeds to go kill his wife. <laughs> Although he doesn't really seem that, that broken up about it. No, he doesn't. He hides it well. <laughs> he's got another one Unless on he side. really... Yeah, unless he's like, yeah, I want Quistus. I want Ultimacia. <laughs> <laughs> the, the chick has never even met. The yeah. least amount of clothes. <laughs> you put on a sorceress. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> no, I, I think their, their love story was strong-ish. I mean... It was definitely the the main theme of the game because the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. Like the right. wars, like I don't really give a shit about any of that. I, I'm sorry, but like their their little plights don't matter to the story. Essentially, no, they're just, they don't. They're just missions. And we for spend you to so carry much out. time on them, though. Yeah, like the train part in the the first mission <laughs> in Timber. Oh my god, <laughs> such a chore. Yeah, we're getting to the Timber stuff. So that that train part. How was that? What what, what system did you guys play this on? I played it on the PC. PC? PlayStation? Yes, sir. Well, Caleb, me and you had an interesting time on that. Oh, on that, yeah. Uh, PC, yes, we did. Didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. On the... <laughs> God damn. <laughs> on the Steam version of the game, the controls are so different from what they are on a PlayStation controller, and yet they almost give no heed <laughs> whatsoever to that part of the game when they no. made like the, no, the they controller did not. configuration. So, like... The one, two, three, and four keys are just everywhere. <laughs> they're in fucking odd directions. Yeah, they're all over the keyboard, and I can't, it's even, I can't even remember what 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 they were on the keyboard, but they were I, nuts. I had to change my key bindings in order to get past this part. Like, oh, did you I really? Had to. I just me- I like had to go over it over and over again. I was like, okay, one, two, three, four. Like it was a it was memorization. <laughs> In like an opposite order, it was weird. Yeah, that that was a huge pain in the ass. It was a huge pain in the ass. So Caleb, you're telling me that you had problems on that part? No, I didn't have problems. And all I can say is, cry me a fucking river. <laughs> I didn't have problems on it. I just didn't cry enjoy me it. River. I didn't find myself being like, this is a fun part of the game. Don't think it's sad about it. I love that fucking song. Oh, I know. That's okay, why I was singing right. it because it was funny. Yeah, it's not. It's not that I found it difficult. I just, I just didn't think it added anything to the entertainment value of the game, which no. is at its core well, it's, what it's, a video game is for. It's one yeah. of those things that Final Fantasy VII had, where it was like a mini game in between the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's 
it's interesting. We love those. I think we all kind of like those in Final Fantasy VII. Maybe not you, Caleb. No, I don't like being forced okay. to play them. Uh, Having well, them optional is me fine. Me and you, but... Caleb Schweiss, I remember on our Final Fantasy VII review, we all we like those kind of things. So it, it's interesting that you didn't like the key binding part. Yeah, I just or the the code breaking. <laughs> I don't know. Mostly, I had to listen to that one song that kind of bothers me. The like military theme. The ten ten did it. Oh yeah. Well, they're like showing you the <laughs> tutorial to, yeah, of the train. I have to go through this thing for like 10 minutes and I'm like, oh, oh the train tutorial. So I've, the been, I've played it so this. many times. I'm like, I goddamn know. I'm like the tutorials in <laughs> this game are insane. <laughs> like, I feel like I know I more. I skipped every tutorial that I could. <laughs> I feel like I know more about the train mini game than like other games solidly as a unit. <laughs> like I know how to do the train thing forever. <laughs> But no, I just didn't, I don't know, I just didn't find it necessarily enjoyable for some reason. I just didn't. That train part? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we get to the, uh, okay, so you go through the train thing, find out that the, it was a dummy president or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then you go on another mission to assassinate the sorceress, Adia, who is in cahoots with the Galbadian president. Am I right on that? Yes. Okay. And, um... So you go to assassinate Adia, but first you need to get a code from a place called the Tomb of the Unknown King. Oh yeah, so like uh, the, what's his name? Just run Renoa's father tells you to go get the That's code right. in so order that, to like, prove yeah, your yeah, in word. order to, yeah, in order to prove There's a your lot worth. Of proving <laughs> in the first disc. Well, what's yeah. interesting is that that's actually a random code too. It like is. you can't look it up online; it's just random. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that, it's easy. it's right at the entrance of the fucking tomb. But I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what it was. No, and then I dropped my phone because I wrote it in a little sticky note on my phone. I dropped my phone. I broke my phone. And, like, I went there and I was like, oh, I'll just grab it. And I'm like, oh, my God. You so didn't I, even know where. It was right at the entrance. No, I know, but I was already in the other city, though, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so I was like. It's a little bit of a pain, but not that much. It was just annoying because I'm like, of course. I put it in my phone like a good little boy, <laughs> and then I break my phone. <laughs> but, yeah, this time, I think what you were asking is, did we just go in and grab it or not? Yeah. And this time, no. I went in and I did everything in there. And then I left. Yeah, I did the same. I went and got the brothers and then I got the code and well, left. So did I. So no one just went and got the code and left. Oh, that's good. The I knew, I knew the brothers were there, so there's really no point in just leaving immediately. That's so true. Yeah, I think we've all gotten the brothers before. Yeah. Um, the trick to that area, just Float. stay to the right the whole time. <laughs> and you'll get the first trigger where you're supposed to go. Then you fight the first brother. Keep going to the right. <laughs> and then you get you do the second trigger area or whatever in the draw point, and then you just keep going to the right till you exit the place again. Go back in and just go straight. Yeah. yeah, you don't need to buy a fucking map or anything. Just stay to the right the whole goddamn time until you fought one of the brothers, and then you just leave by staying to the right, and uh, then you just go straight in. And, and you'll go across a bridge and then fight both of the brothers. Which and, yes, float is yeah. useful. And then the key is float. <laughs> but I'd say you. For, I'd no. say protect blind and reflect are all useful in that in that fight reflect yeah. i never really uh used reflect because they didn't uh, really they, cast they anything at me themselves. yeah oh yeah that's why you cast float on them because they're like when they're touching the ground they automatically cure no, themselves they, they, they'll cure themselves with this oh oh I think with, with the a like, spell or with a potion something yeah it's a potion oh, okay I, it, it might even, i might have used shell or something but some kind of uh something that'll lessen that mm, okay. but uh yeah that's what I used on them. And then, of course, your assassination fails because your sniper is an unproven person who they've hired to assassinate. Yeah, he's like the no, best sharpshooter ever, he and shoots. yet he uses a shotgun that's a sawed-off shotgun, by the way. <laughs> so it has, like, less accuracy. No, no, it's just no, a marksman. There was a, there was a gun up there for them. They well, I know, but, like, rifle. he's a, sar- a sharpshooter, and he uses a sawed-off shotgun. I believe that he's a trained his... sharpshooter, but he's never killed anyone before. Well, yeah, that's what he says. Of all the people to hire to kill a world leader... Yeah, like, they choose the one guy who's never done it before. <laughs> they, they choose a guy who's never killed someone before. Yeah, well, he did shoot, though, eventually, and it was blocked by the barrier. He, he shot her right in the head. Oh, he well, yeah. she knew by that time, so. Yeah, here's, here's I, another thing that, here's something that I don't understand. Later on, of course, you're in a prison. That has an anti-magic barrier. Oh, yeah, the infamous the anti- anti-magic barrier. The anti-magic uh, field or whatever the fuck it is. Why didn't they put up their own anti-magic field 
I mean, unless, of course, you need three giant corkscrews in order to get that done. I think you need the g- three giant corkscrews. Maybe. I'm just wondering why they didn't put up a, a, a magic barrier when they were going to get, assassinate a sorceress. Maybe it's like a gigantic thing. Well, she had the thing around her, though. She had the... Remember Renoa had that little bracelet on that she was able to get close to Adea? The, so Adea already had something blocking anything from her. It was like her own force field. Do you not remember I think that? they said that that was like a trinket and didn't actually work. Because I think... I remember them like laughing at her for it. And then that's why she like leaves... <laughs> And leaves them in the room or something like that. Well, Renoa's doesn't I'm not work. Sure. I'm not sure there was something that Renoa was supposed to have that she was able to get close to the sorceress. Yeah, it was it was a bracelet that her like dad had, but they were like, no, that's that doesn't actually but work. That's <laughs> not what bothers me about that part. What bothers me is the whole thing with Quistus and like they like oh, that they, whole oh, they gotta oh go. A, we gotta go apologize to Renoa. Yeah, dude, why? <laughs> I, I have not felt anxiety in a that, game. That's before. why they they, <laughs> they they told her it was stupid, and that's why they went to be up to go apologize. Yeah, yeah Quistus, uh, uh, not professional in that moment at all. Yeah, they're oh, like, I we gotta go abandon our post. <laughs> abandon your post on this mission, which we're going to assassinate a world leader. And Who's a are, sorceress who uses more powerful we, magic than we're capable of. Anything could happen on your way to go apologizing to Renoa. Right. You have a 20 minute time zone. Don't go do that. What is the fucking, what's the matter with you? She's like, yeah. Oh, I better go apologize. Yeah, I was really Like no one's out. like, uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, I think we were too harsh on her. Maybe that's why Squall is the leader, is because everyone else is just too stupid to do it. Maybe it's just it, <laughs> not he's that he's just necessarily enough emotionless that uh, yeah. not he necessarily can get away with it. Yeah, Renoa can go fuck herself. <laughs> not necessarily. The first this. <laughs> yeah, not, he's not necessarily a good leader, but he's the less of the worst. So yeah, that whole part was like it brought on anxiety for me. I was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "God, there's this there's this mission you're trying to take out. You're supposed to be a professional. You're the teacher here." And of course, they get locked in the yeah, room. Oh yeah, they get locked in the and room, they and they make... don't even think about climbing out the window. There's a, yeah, there's perfectly good. They're still on the first floor. Yeah, they're as on far the first as we can floor, tell. and there's like three windows that they could like leave through, but they're like, nah. <laughs> well, they did. Oh, no, find the door is locked. We'll crawl through the sewers instead. Yeah, <laughs> the maze of sewers, by the way. Yeah. Yep. Which, in the end, it didn't even matter because they were able to carry out the mission as far as they would have anyway. How did they do that in, like, 20 minutes? Like, that city's got to be gigantic, and then they get, like... I didn't. <laughs> I can tell you that. I didn't. But it didn't matter. Dude, this one time when I didn't realize you had to go talk to... Like, there was the scene where the guy's walking you around. Okay, this is where everything's happening. This is the 20-minute mark or whatever. Yeah. I didn't realize I had to talk to him again, and like I had an old TV and I couldn't see him on my screen. This is the first time I played through the game, and uh, so I was like, "Okay, he said twenty minute mark." So I took my squall guy and I waited. You know how you can sit in the square and there's actually time going off. Yeah. I waited twenty minutes, and nothing happened. <laughs> I went right past the clock. <laughs> This is the first time I played the game, and I was, like, stuck because I didn't know where to go or whatever on just that one particular part. <laughs> you know how mad I'd be if I actually had to wait 20 real minutes I was on pretty that? P- I just went away for a little while and then came back. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't just I thought you were just, like, minutes. sitting there all super excited. Just like, I oh, see yeah, it. 20 minutes. This is a crazy realistic game. Yeah, I could just see young, <laughs> really dumb Joe just hanging out there. <laughs> it's like, what? It's been 20 minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, and so, of course, assassination fails, and then you get uh, impaled. <laughs> yeah, with the uh, icicle With an icicle. Death. And yet, uh, and you're like, oh, shit, did Squall just die? I mean, this is like a psycho twist, you know, where the main character dies in the first 20 minutes, or in the first disc, if it's a Final Fantasy. And then uh, you you go into the the next disc, and uh, no. no yeah, he's die. totally alive. It's fine. <laughs> Everybody's just in an anti-magic prison. <laughs> yeah, the anti-magic field prison. And, of course, you, you make your way out of that prison. One of the most annoying parts of the game, by the way, I think, is that prison. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of walking upstairs and the fucking, same fights over and over again. Can you use your magic in the battles? Luckily, by then, I think I had the Encounter 9 ability. So I was just running up and mm. only had to fight the fights that they forced me into. Um, but still. <laughs> yeah, I found that part to be... A pain too. I was like, this isn't really enjoyable. I could. And I think you can still use the magic when you're uh, in in the prison, like in the release, in the fighting. They release something, and then you're allowed to use magic pretty early on. That's also sure? where you yeah. uh, 
It's also mm-hmm. the area where you find out that Squall is the son of uh, Laguna. Cause that Wait, little, it doesn't actually tell you. Well, the little beast calls you Laguna. Oh, that's, yeah. That's they, like, hint you. at it the entire yeah, time. That's... No one... The, never in the entire game does it tell you that Rain is Squall's mother and that Laguna is Squall's father. Right there, it kind of does. The it only place it kind of does is when it's like, oh, Rain is pregnant. Or Rain was pregnant, and then, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then Rain's dead later on. <laughs> yeah. They just kill her off. <laughs> and Alone is his older sister, and Alone is Laguna's stepdaughter or whatever, so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, the, it. Never tells you explicitly that, that that's yeah, but that's what that means. Squall's so. his father, but it does it does tell you that yeah, and that of course Squall's his father explains. Sorry, Laguna's his father. <laughs> Should be Laguna's a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> um, it, it explains it a little. It doesn't really explain it. I, mean, I should say I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> um, let's see what, what what do we got here? Missile so you, base after that. The missile base after that. Uh, they never explain how they got how they lived through that explosion. Oh, I know. They like don't that tell giant you explosion that you go through this a uh, really annoying mission base level, and then you're outside and it's like oh we're just gonna give up and die here. Giant explosion. Then like in uh, maybe two hours of gameplay later they come back and they're fine. Yeah, they like they and they're in the machine that blew up with them. Mm-hmm. Well, like, that was one of them. Yeah, it was one of the. It was the vehicles. one that they were fighting. They just like yeah. took over. Well, yeah. they could have had numerous vehicles there, but they all got blown to shit. Yeah, they all got the blown to nothing, and then just fucking maybe that, that game would have the... been way sweeter if like the people in that party died. <laughs> well, I think that might support the Squall is Dead theory even further with all this unrealistic stuff happening after. That's the true. Are icicle. we going to talk about Squall is Dead next week? Yeah, we are. Okay, all right. You're going to play on that one. Uh, maybe. <laughs> somebody one. is <laughs> okay um and of course that's that's when that's before that's after you split up the two parties squall's party of course gets to the school and all hell is breaking loose yeah because they're like we support norg who do you support and sid is hiding in his office yeah they're like don't think to check there <laughs> well maybe this is why they all got their asses kicked i guess <laughs> They're not that advanced. Like, they say they're the super advanced... No, they're the less advanced forms of the little furries. Why would the... Why would your biggest... Fuck, what, what is the word I'm looking for here? Your biggest investor, right? Why would your investor live inside your school at the bottom in this... Like, like the like, basement level? The sub-basement basement level. level? He doesn't like the light. You have to go through this whole, like, crazy shit to get to doesn't make any sense you know what i'm talking about there's there's like an elevator to him i I get that but you have to go through all that shit to make the garden even work oh oh yeah that stuff to make the it fly yeah Uh, yeah, i don't don't understand any of that and then yeah and then the weird guy just hanging out down there (laughs) i'm just remembering something like they said something about Sid building seed, and then, like, Still Sid the said something level. about, like, not knowing that was there. Yeah. Bullshit. Like, how would you not know that? Yeah. Did you bullshit. just, like, discover these buildings and then claim to build them? <laughs> like, maybe he was full of shit. Maybe he was to pick up a deer. <laughs> It's like, hey, I, uh, I built this. Then it turns this. out, it turns out they don't even know how to steer the goddamn thing. It hits into a city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, sorry, guys, we'll move it as soon as we can. <laughs> <laughs> God, Balam Garden is just uh, full of stupid people. Dis- dysfunction everywhere in that place. Yeah, and then the beloved Fisherman's Horizon. Uh, that's actually there's a hidden draw point in the office area. Ultima. Ultima, right? yeah. yeah. It's, I, it's I, not I very it. much, it. but it's there. It's near the <laughs> foreground of the thing. Just start pressing X everywhere, you'll find it. Yeah. It's pretty nice. I found it. No, I found it up in the office where you go talk to the leader of the city. It's, it's still in the foreground, right? You have to, like, walk all the way into the city. Maybe there's two. Maybe. I don't I'm, know. I found it, and I was like, oh, It's sweet. in the mirror's area. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think okay, we're talking yeah. about the same one. Yeah, we're talking about the same thing. And then apparently a lot of people... A lot of people really like the Fisherman's Horizon theme. The music? Yeah. I don't even really remember that song. I've heard... I don't think I l- really... Well, I was playing the Steam version of the game, and it doesn't sound as good as the version that you played, Caleb. Uh, the sound doesn't anyway. Because uh, unlike Final Fantasy VII, they haven't uh, redone the 
the tracks. I see. As far as I know, but I still won't. We'll get to music later, but um, I have heard redone versions of the Fisherman Horizon scenes that I really do like, and I think the tune is nice. I just don't really like the arrangement in the game. No. Yeah. Um, but I do understand why people like it. It's not. It's not like horrible or anything. It's not like the Esther theme. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh jeez, um, that thing is killer. Doot, doot, doot. Or uh, the the battle theme with Laguna. Yeah. I've heard redone versions that are pretty sweet, but like the actual version, I'm just like, eh. You know. But of course, a lot of people like the music from this game. Uh, you know, Occupied Balam. Trebia Garden, Clash of the Gardens, big sequence in there. Yeah, that's actually one of the sweet sequences of this game. It is. Game. One of my favorite cutscenes, I think, is when you're Squall and you're uh, and, and Renoa after Squall saves the saves Renoa off of the you know side of the thing, which somehow she holds on for like an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> also. And then, uh, then he, you know, runs through with her, and there's like a battle going on behind him, like a real battle that you finally see a battle in Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, yeah. there's all these wars going on, and only one battle, and uh, it's between two schools. It's <laughs> sweet though. It it's is awesome. an awesome, awesome part. And then, of course, you go into the school and find the sorceress and cipher and fly her off. What were you about to say? Uh, the mini game there was like horrendously painful to do. Where you're like fighting the dude on the little oh, rope. Dude, I'm like, yeah. holy shit, this guy is this guy is the man, right? Like this guy <laughs> could kill Squall and beat the game so <laughs> <laughs> like freakish amount of stamina with the hits. But uh anyway, we'll talk about that more in gameplay. I'm sure. Uh, what well, okay, now let's talk about that now. Um I th- I've heard that if you use Zell's punching bag a lot in his room that you'll be better at the punching. Oh, really? Really? That's kind of cool. That's what I have heard. I'm not sure if that's actually true. That would you know be when you go cool. into Zell's, Zell's room, though? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, remember, punch. I remember that. This time around, I hit it like a hundred times because I was like, maybe something will happen. Like, maybe my strength will go up by one. That'd be sweet. Well, that kind of reminds <laughs> me of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 a little bit. There's... Uh, did you ever play that one, Joe? Uh, no, not too. There's a lot of, uh, you know, walking around on ledges and moving with your hands. And there's like, you can press L2... And R2 to kind of pull yourself up and look. But if you do 100 pull-ups, your stamina bar will, like, increase for your grip. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, so, like, I in the very beginning when I played it the second time, I just did, like, a shitload of pull-ups. And then my bar was, like, max. And I could just hold on forever. Oh, that's awesome. So I hope that that's true. I think that might be true. What I did to beat that guy, I just went back and forth between... Uh kick and punch and i just like straddle that's, those two buttons yeah that's what back i and did forth, and i beat him like no other huh. yeah like, it was it's kind of a cheap way of doing it but that's what i did yeah you kind of have to time time i didn't the... time shit i just mashed them both really I just, yeah i went back and forth really quickly between the two of them that's yeah. kind of what i did but i was like timing it so like i could okay get the kicks in just right i think he hit me like twice but i because like when you punch him at the right time and like stops him from doing anything i guess i played the little game the way they wanted I, I tried so. to block and shit. Tried I like block. rolled up into a ball, <laughs> the fetal position on the rope. <laughs> yeah, so there's that part. Kill the sorceress once again. Yeah. Uh, there's a weird part with Renoa where she's like possessed for the first oh, time yeah. in the game. You figure it out later, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Ellen alone, or how the fuck do you say her name? I said alone. I, I think I it's saying. Ellen. I think that's I think how it is it's Ellen, suppo- but it's spelled like a freak. I always said alone the first time, but then, like, I thought about it and I was like, maybe that's supposed to be Ellen. I think it is supposed to be Ellen. <laughs> yeah, they probably just messed up on the translation. But I think I switch between the two all the time. So if I say Ellen or alone in this podcast, we're know, all alone. It all means the same person. Yeah. Ellen alone. 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 <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she gets uh, taken by the by the soldiers, and you go out and find her. And yeah, the white sea chip. Yeah, the condom men. Yeah, you make your way to Esthar, and uh, uh, Dia's trying to get rid of her powers or something, and she has to go to the weird doctor dude. Dr. Odin. Yeah, yeah. so you got to make your way to Esthar anyway, and who's wearing the most ridiculous thing on his head, mm-hmm. the neck thing. <laughs> <laughs> meet up with them anyway you find out um, Renoa has sorceress powers and 
get to go up into a spaceship. And I think this is the section of the game that really I think, awesome. cements itself into being awesome. Because, I mean, before this happens, before you go up into space and do the saving Renoa sequence, yeah. basically, the game... You're kind of going from place to place to place with the game, like oh this sorceress, now this sorceress, yeah. and you're still doing that. You're still in the middle of that, but pretty much there's actually like a human connection here, and you got something to go for in the you know second half of this three or, or yeah. just this three in general. Yeah, I mean once you get fired out of a fucking revolver into space is when it really starts. <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's true. It, it like, does like, happen. Shh. Did you notice the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey references in the thing where it's like the classical? Well, it was kind of classical music. Yeah. I was like, uh, oh, were, it was like trying it. to sound a little bit like the uh, like the 2001 music uh, in space. And I think it did. Kind of there. Yeah, it was close to it. The one of the it sounded space... a little circusy, but yeah, that space song I hated. But then the one when you get on the Ragnarok, I thought it was good. Yeah. But it was really good. So it was like almost 2001 and awesome, but at the same time, you're right. It sounded all circus esque, and I'm like, yeah. I think, <laughs> almost. I, I think they were going for a little bit of 2001 when you first enter space, though. Yeah. It, that's yeah. how I felt, too. I was like oh, imagining was the cool. intro with the ship. But of course, I think I think this is when the game really picks up, which is unfortunate because it was near the end. Um, <laughs> uh, when you go out and save Renoa, which is a great sequence, and she's dying out there, Squall's asking you to take him back in time, and. So that he can, you know, listen to Renault or whatever. And then he just decides to go out and save her and are miraculously saved by a spaceship just floating out in space. <laughs> oh, yeah, the lost no crew, spaceship. Which happens to be awesome and a mech machine transformer as well as a ship. Yeah. <laughs> which I almost didn't notice until the part where you board the... Uh, Reboard the lunatic bender. Yeah, and it like clashes on with its arms and it's got a face and I'm like, yeah, it's holy like shit, it's alive. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why don't we just take this thing in? <laughs> Destroy all. Yeah. <laughs> Destroy. Come with me, Eagletron. <laughs> It is sweet. Uh, yeah, I think the parts where you save Renoa and then of course you have to go kill Adele now. Um I think those those parts are some of the greatest moments of the game. And then past that, of course, we go to Dis 4 with Ultimacia's castle, and you kill the person who has been mind-controlling, uh, mindception once again, as we've seen from Final Fantasy IV. Yeah. We are now seeing in this one with sorceresses instead. Um, the mindception, you have to go kill the source mindception of the mindception. returns. Ultimacia, and then you have to warn Adia in the past, thus completing the circuit of time travel. Yeah. It's a crazy game. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. It is. So, well, that's... <laughs> Squall creates seeds, which he so gets that's, part that's of. That's basically mm-hmm. the overview of, of what happens in the game. I mean, there's, of course, bosses in between. We'll talk about that, whatever comes up. The story. I mean, we've, we've basically mm-hmm. gone over the story here. Uh, of course, you do eventually get a strong relationship with, R- with Renoa when you're in in the Ragnarok as Squall and Renoa. Um, the, the you know it starts to become a love story about there, and then you decide, oh, you know, she'll wait for me in this plane or whatever of flowers. Yeah, <laughs> at Adia's place, you know, she doesn't want to turn into a sorceress again. And then, of course, uh, at the very end of the game, you know, Squall and Renoa they kiss, and then the final shot zooms out of the garden and the garden floats away and the game ends um caleb craig yeah your general thoughts about the story i don't know man i i just don't know this game i didn't really i didn't really like it to be honest like i didn't like the love story between squall and renoa it was like very very high school and he's like all emo y and like when they're in the Ragnarok, he like she's all like hugging on him and just wants to be with him and he's like, Get in the other chair. Yeah. <laughs> well the part about Get in the other no. no. Get over there. <laughs> well I wanted to be I want you to be at least five feet away from me. <laughs> and I, I feel the same when I'm trying to sleep, but <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting about that point also, and I don't mean Pedal to cut you off. Over. I don't mean to cut you off, but the reason why I see where you're coming from is there's a scene before they go to Esthar where Squall finally opens up, quote unquote, yeah. to her. And then there's this later 
where they're all alone, and he's like, now he's closed off again. I mean, I could get laid right now, but... But instead... <laughs> in a zero-G environment. Yeah, just imagine. You don't even have to deal with the cleanup. It'll just float away. <laughs> you know? You might have to deal with it more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's be clear. So walks in, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> There. Tell me that, that didn't just that, happen. That's how he gels his hair. Oh. <laughs> God. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, I didn't really like that part of the love story. Good. And I, I feel like Cypher was a better character than Squall. Why do you say that? Well, he just had more, like, moments that were human. Because, I mean, like, he really did love Renoa, too. And, like, he got really mad that he couldn't become a seed to, like, help her out. Because, like, he introduced her to seed so that he could go with her when he became a seed. And then, like, he, uh... When he finds out that, like, Squall was assigned to the mission and that he couldn't go... He, like, leaves Garden so that he could go help her and then kidnaps the uh, president of Galbadia, backs himself into a corner, and Squall's just watching, like, heh heh. Oh. He's like, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but Cypher's an idiot, and I wouldn't have wanted to play Cypher. Cypher is kind of an I'll idiot. Uh, Cypher certainly has does have more interesting moments. I think because Squall, they gave us an introverted character like they did with Cloud. Yeah. But they gave this character less of a backstory than they did with Cloud. Certainly, you know, Cloud lying about his past, having someone else's memory, you know, confused with his own, or he's lying about it, who knows. And then, uh, then Squall, Squall just kind of, had a lonely childhood and is now a mercenary. But he didn't have a lonely childhood. We found that but, out later but, when but, they but, spoiled well, it. What I'm trying to say is they gave him an they gave us an introverted character uh, to give to project ourselves onto that character. So we are Squall, I think is what the point is in the game. Yeah, but not everybody's introverted. I'd say that a lot of gamers are. Yeah. Probably, but still. Like... I'm just saying in general. And they gave they gave a, them a character to latch onto as themselves. As it's, ourselves. Yeah. As we play the game. I think that might have been part of the point. Yeah, and that's probably part of the reason why a lot of people really like the game. is because they can relate to the main character. They can character. relate to Squall not being able to talk to girls. Sure. <laughs> Even though he's a trained, you know, it's not that I can't talk to girls. Agent. He doesn't want to. He's got girls like banging at his door. That's like, true. <laughs> that that doesn't make any sense to me. But <laughs> yeah, especially with Quist, is good. Yeah. God damn. Son. Well, maybe he's just. I don't know. Maybe he just feels like he wants to resist. It's kind of like in Schindler's List, where the guy goes to the one dude and he's like killing anyone the ability to kill anyone at any time isn't what makes you powerful the ability to not kill someone Such is what true quote, power is that whatever, is, that whatever. Is what it's... that's what squall is doing he he's listening to oscar schindler <laughs> and he's like i can resist and be better yeah and then he tries it and then fails because that's yeah. what happens at schindler's list and then he just decides to kill the kid instead you know when his kid when the kid has turned his back on him and yeah he does kill him it's like i forgive you and then the kid starts going away and he's like nah and then he shoots him and it's horrible well he doesn't <laughs> the back... schindler's list is a great movie it me. is but yeah maybe that's part of it maybe he just feels like he's stronger because he can resist I don't think that he, he has does. anything to do with it. <laughs> he does say something I like that, I think you're that, pulling though. that out of your ass, Caleb. I don't know. He I'll does, be, he does say honest. something about, like, not wanting to be with anybody because it makes him, like, unable to be hurt. I get it. Well, Ellen, Ellen left him. And so he's all by himself without sis. And we see Even the flashback like, of people. the child in the rain. Like, I'm staying strong. Or whatever he says. You know, that's that's the idea is that he can't get close to anybody. And at the end of the game, he does get close to someone. And I feel like a lot of introverted gamers may feel the same way. And I think that uh, that's the problem with being attracted to gaming or something. It's it's a it's a very lonely sport. You're by yourself <laughs> playing these RPGs. Uh, you're not out socializing or something like that. And I know this is a horrible thing to get into on a gaming podcast. Um but I think you could feel some kind of connection with that if you were that 
personality, which I would say that I kind of was in high school. So Yeah, so was I. Not anymore, but that's how I was. Yeah. Eh. So I, I, I can <laughs> see it. And I certainly... I think I, I connected with Character Squall when I was younger. Um, I don't so much connect with him now. I'm still young, but I still don't I don't connect with him as much as I... So now, now I look at him and I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. So, Caleb, what did you think of the story? Well, you already asked him that. Yeah. I know, I know. And then we cut him off for like okay, 20 sorry. minutes. <laughs> well, he said he didn't well, like it. Yeah. I, he didn't like the, then, the love story. thought Cypher was more interesting. I thought he was more interesting. And then there's like a part where he realizes what he's doing is bad, but he can't like stop doing it now because he's like too far gone or he like he feels that he is. And so like... <laughs> And then Fujin and Raijin say, like, they can't follow him anymore. And then he's like, I accept that. And then he, like, lets him go. And it was awesome. I felt like that was a sweet moment for Cypher. And then then he's like, and then he gets all badass and then cuts Odin in half if you got him. That's true. Yeah, that is an awesome part. He's well, like, it'll take more than that to defeat me. And then I killed him in like three I, hits. But I, then. <laughs> I think the idea is that Gilgamesh is supposed to be the one that killed Odin. And he had Gilgamesh. What? I, I think that, he slices. No, there, like he kills. He kills Odin, and then Gilgamesh comes in. And I think he was like sword hunting because he's like, "You gave me the fourth one." May, oh, and yeah, he picks up right. Odin's sword, and then he like kills him at the end. The, yeah, that's true. He did, it is a pretty badass part. I think it would have been stronger if if Cipher was a harder boss. No, or <laughs> yeah, or if he Cypher... should have been. He was supposed to be like Squall's opposite, so really he should have been like. Yeah, you're going. Through I whooped line. his ass every time. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, like, like destroyed it. Yeah, Cypher was such an easy boss for me. This time, at least. But uh, with that, I do see where you're coming from. But I think it would have been stronger. He would have been even stronger if he would have quit when his friends quit. Because that after that point, he really didn't have anything else to hold on to. Well, at the end that, of the game, Cypher was just he's, He wanted to hold on to his dream, though. That's like what he was going for the entire time. And Ultimacia he kind of manipulated him. He <laughs> manipulated, she manipulated him. And then that's why he was like, he realizes that it wasn't right, but he still wanted to go through with it because he felt like he couldn't not do it it would be interesting to play a final fantasy game where you're not the good guy it certainly it would, be. would be interesting but uh it would be far in the future before they ever try something yeah. like that yeah. like, sadly then... <laughs> sadly because that would be very very fun i believe a but, nice spin and then the other thing that i didn't like was like they have ultimacy oh uh, yeah ultimacy is set up as like the final boss but then she doesn't have like any real goal she wants to control her own world in which she is alone in it. That doesn't make any sense because at one point in time, she says that she wants to rule everyone. Like while she has uh, control wants... over Adia, she's like, I but want she's to. She's the only one. She who says, can live I rule the... all of she you. Can... She's the only one who can live in her world of time compression. Well, I know that's what like they say, but she never actually says that herself. Um, yeah, it is. It is. It's it, it's it a is weird bad motivation. It's I don't a weird think... convoluted thing that nobody understands. I agree with you that Ultimacia does not have any good. Motivation. And how the hell did she get Griever? Like Griever is like squall's symbol did she just like imagine I him saw or an explanation online we're of course going to go into this a little bit more in another episode soon um i saw an explanation online that was like griever was squall's idea of the ultimate guardian force well no you gotta remember that's what i saw and that she you know she creates that she yeah. creates the ultimate guardian force that Squall could think of. Griever is, of course, the, the symbol that he has on, on himself. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's still kind of weird that she would do that. I is mean, there, like, cause... It would make sense if there was some point in time where he gave Renoa the, uh, the necklace, but he gives her the ring. Well, the ring has it on there, too. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's when she gets the ring from him. So perhaps Renoa is Ultimacy. I think <laughs> Renoa is Ultimacy. That's the only... Well, it's not the only answer. But she comes from the future. It even it's says future, she was like born in the future. Renoa, future Renoa with something of Zell or uh, Squalls, not Zells. <laughs> you know, so that that would make sense for her to be the same character because she does have the ring and she is from the future and she still has the ring in the future. Comes back we'll, with Griever. We'll talk about it in like two episodes. I don't know. It's it's a, well, it's kind of a some stretch. More, but... Some more information on this. Um. You know, I thought the story, I thought it was hard to get through this time around. The first time I played it, though, I was kind of floored by it. 
because of how in depth it was. And I do think that the story has one thing going for it that some of the early Final Fantasies don't have. Which is really solid characters. And what I mean by that, I don't necessarily mean three-dimensional, but I do mean that if there's a piece of dialogue on screen, you can have their name blacked out and you know who said it. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. They have a very distinct way of talking. They have distinct attitudes about things. They have distinct body language. Uh, I think the characters are well-drawn and memorable because of that. I mean, there's a million characters in Six, some of which are less memorable than others. But you can remember every single character in Final Fantasy VIII. You see, you know, spunky, selfie, fucking zany as shit, Zell, uh, you know, Squall, Emo Squall. You know, you can you can put all those kind of titles on everyone. And in that simple kind of way, people recognize the characters easier. And I think that is something that, that Final Fantasy VIII did well, was was the characters. And making each character very unique. Certainly had some characters that were Seven did the better. same thing, though. I, yeah. Seven seven was in that in that part, too. But I'm saying, you know, six and backwards, there were some characters that are like, okay, which was the, you know, the granddaughter of the one <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, the grandpa character, you know, which was, who was Tella yeah. and who was Fusoya. And, yeah, and yeah. that's why we get mixed up. It's because they're, they're Well, you not... can tell with some of the other characters, though, in 4. Like, you could definitely tell who would be talking if it was, like, Kane, Cecil, or even Rosa, who was a nothing character. I and agree like, with you, I, I knew but not the, every character. I knew the difference between Fusoya and Tella, too. But so. not every character. I mean, you can even tell Biggs and Wedge in Final Fantasy You can VIII. tell <laughs> Pelham and Porum apart, and they're twins. Sure, yeah. And I'm, I'm even, saying every even character. Yang. I'm saying every character in eight instead of just, like, the main ones. So, we have six playable characters in eight, and there's distinct personalities for every single one of them. Yeah. Okay. So... I felt like uh, other characters were really strong too. Like Adia and Sid were pretty, pretty strong characters. Like the moment when Sid breaks down when he realizes he can't do anything to like help. So, so maybe what Final Fantasy VIII lacks in plot, because <laughs> to me it was just going, it was very sequential, just kind of random shit until this three, I'd say. Uh, and the Laguna stuff made no sense until this. Yeah, three. Laguna wasn't even a good character. No, Laguna was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really care for him either. But um, I think what it what it what it lacks in plot and writing, it makes up for in really strong characters. For in a general sense, um, uh, you know, it, it is kind of a mark on the game that the that the story isn't that engrossing until this three. Um, for you know, a multiplayer through for, for myself, Caleb Schweiss, what do you think of the story? Well. I felt the story was okay. I mean, I can see where it is based on a love theme. That's very evident to me. And I don't... I, I kind of see where both of you guys come from with it. Joe thinks it's a strong love. I, Caleb Craig thinks it's really weak and childish. But at the same time, they are children. They're like 17, 18. They're 18. <laughs> they're, they're not very old. That's something that we have to remember with these... Characters that act like idiots, they're not very old, so... Neither are we, I can't really True. say, well, oh, back in my day, It's or different, like though. That. It's different, because, I, I don't know, I wasn't really like that when I was his age, so it's hard for me, especially, because I'm like, I was never that way, so I'm like, yeah, it's a total disconnect, but I think that's one thing we have to remember about these Final Fantasy games, is they are kids, it's about the journey of becoming an adult, essentially, by the end of the game, that's... That's like one of the themes in the games. No. I don't know if it necessarily happens. They but go back to school. Some <laughs> some of the other love stories are like ridiculous too. Like the one between uh, Laguna and Julia. They he like bashfully walks up and he's like freaking thirty or nah, something. Yeah, like he's, he's like walking up to her and like oh I, I have Cramping a his yeah leg. he's like I got a leg cramp. I I gotta Stupid. walk back. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> he's kind of dumb, but I mean that was kind of. It's kind of the point, I guess. 
Although it is weird that he becomes the leader. It's like, seriously, this guy? Yeah, like, he becomes the leader of guy. S-Star. Like, there's no one else that can, like, kill him in, in battle. I mean, I, I know that there isn't, because I he, junctured he's the, the shit only, out of He's him, the but. smartest character. He's got a gun. Like, nobody else has a gun. <laughs> That's true. Well, kind of has a gun. Yeah. Kinda, a gun blade. He likes to have the best of both worlds. Well, I mean, gun blade in the series. Yeah, well, his teacher can shoot <laughs> laser beams from her eyes, so. And rockets out of her tits. Yeah. No like, machine gun. That's she's what a Fembot. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. She's the one redheaded robot from Terminator 3. Remember her? Super hot one that like ends up being a Terminator by the end of the movie. The, the Terminatrix? Yeah, that, that chick. <laughs> okay. She it's was her. The Terminatrix. She was. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I felt the story was, like I said, well, I thought They already it was used right. T-1000. They gotta keep coming up with other Terminator names. Yeah, they keep killing them. Yeah. The T-1000 was better than the Terminatrix, though. It's like, really? You got a lesser model. Well, it was a female, so they use different wiles, I guess. Yeah, but she couldn't turn into liquid Terminator. That's true. And that is a very weak point. Yeah. But uh, with the story... I'm um, talking about Terminator. But... Yeah. <laughs> not now. Not now. I felt the the love story between Squall and Renault was all right. I mean, I did feel like a lot of times it was one-sided. Quite, quite yeah, so. Yeah, because Renault kind of throws herself at him. But Renault also was with Cipher or Cipher for a long time too, and it's almost kind of with Cipher. But it almost makes her seem kind of flimsy with it, like it's just a. She's a flussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. Like she's just kind of this giddy girl that just has all these random feelings because she's young. Yeah. yeah. Like the ones in high school well, that I was always like. At the end of the game, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be together forever. I mean, they just have a kiss and they're still. True. They're still in school, so... They're still kids. They kind of want to, though. Yeah, but I think that's part of the theme, too, what Joe just mentioned, that they are still kids. It's They're not, like, completely grown up well, like we see 18. in some of these games. They have to be grown up now. They're adults. Yeah, they're it doesn't d- work the, that way. school wasn't really they're school. Still, it was like a military training zone. You don't they're just... Still in, they're still in school with a bunch of other people that are Renault younger. Renault is not in school. No, she's not. Why is she there? And she's younger. <laughs> she's, like, 17. Hold on. Yeah, why is she there? Why is Renoa in the garden at the end of the game? Maybe she are they all just up. are they just celebrating the end of Ultimacy? I think I think that they're just dating now, and that she's just living well, with him because there. he has a room. I have no idea. Squall runs that, the school. It doesn't so really make any sense. Is, I have no idea. Squall runs the school now, so we can do whatever the hell he, he wants. Kind of does. Kind of. Sid yeah, does put him in charge of like the entire charge. garden. I think it might have been in charge for you know that section, and not necessarily that he. <laughs> You know, owns the place. But. Well, I think he could contest it and it would come out on top. I don't know. Did you feel like uh, the first time that you played this game, were you engulfed in the story? Like, were you wondering, okay, what happened next? Not really. Uh, were was, you just playing it because it was Final Fantasy? Partially that and because, like, despite uh, how bad the junction system is and all that stuff, I, I kind of did like playing it. Okay, we'll talk about gameplay in a second. Yeah, okay. Caleb did play a lot of it, and I, I couldn't understand it at the were time. Were you, but... like, how how engrossed were you into the story, Caleb Schweiss? I mean, d- were we all more engrossed at the end, of, like, near the second half of Dis 3? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the that's, game... That's when it really kind of has something. Okay. The other game just feels like, yeah, well... <laughs> I feel it, like, I know we haven't uh, reviewed this game yet, and we'll certainly play it again. I feel like 13 has the same problem, where you're not really into it until the end. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of people don't make it there. <laughs> It's really that game is really slow starting and then yeah. slow middle and then then it gets better. An awesome, awesome end, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you and, guys haven't even touched. <laughs> yeah, with eight, I don't even know if the ending, the story necessarily gets better. I just think the game becomes more. Well, it has awesome. all these incredibly epic scenes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, not, it does. Well, Squall going out and saving Renoa is a awesome part. We're like, I the failed game, that part the, the first game time. Has, <laughs> Me too. Really? I didn't no, know what was happening. Like, never failed I, it. I, I didn't know what was happening either. Like, it was like, you oh, you gotta her. save Renault. I know, but it, like, it didn't... You like, just kind of, like, try to get... I didn't realize it was the first person She kind of disappeared thing. off my screen, like, and then you're supposed to, like, point yourself you're just towards to her. Point yourself in the yeah, middle. and, like, I had no idea where she was, so That's I was like, where, the, where I, uh, am I supposed to go? <laughs> anyway, so the game has the balls to have a section where Renault is going to die out in space... 
uh, by like like with no oxygen, and she just kind of like floats there. There's like one section. I swear to God, the shot is a minute long, where it's just her body just kind of floating out there. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, that is great. That is that is something I think spectacular. Uh, almost that just that scene is, it does have is some pretty, pretty sweet cut scenes now, i mean we got other a deus scenes. Ex, Ma- deus ex machina with the ragnarok, <laughs> the ragnarok just being there um but before that happens i mean it's just like whoa that like that that part took my breath away and then of course i think the next part that took my breath away was fighting when going into time compression was crazy oh yeah fighting like the 20 different you, sorceresses yeah, you're in the yeah. time compression condom that bursts did you guys see that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you fight through all the sorceresses, which, I mean, the music in that part is great, and the visuals were, like, you know, crazy and insane. I just thought it was awesome that Ultimacia's Castle was this really, like, you know, gothic kind of looking with the music and everything. I thought it was just fantastic. Once once the game <laughs> got to that point, before then, with, like, Gal- Galbadia and all that other shit and Esthar... Not as interesting. I thought that was kind of cool too, but then it kind of threw off the uh, supposed to be futuristic kind of thing. Because, like, Ultimacia is, like, super far in the future, right? But then, like, and they're in a, time in a world. So it's I know, but they're still. It, it's, it's like all of the future and all of the past is happening at once, and they're still, like, and they wanted to go for a semi futuristic old- theme, and yet, like, she lives in a really old castle. <laughs> That like she still has like chandeliers castle. that are being run on freaking like candlelight. So it's like, what? Where? Where is the future theme just now? Likes the castle. You know where I would live if I could. I would live in Neuschwanstein. Uh, that would where be I would live. that would be kind of. I would live in a fucking castle if I could. <laughs> No matter, see, there you go. That's so, the uh, I could see it. She just wants to live in a castle. <laughs> could still she have... wants to feel like she's in control, so she's got a big throne room in a castle. I mean, she likes the you old feel style. In control of the world, where she's going to rule by herself. And for some odd reason, she has these creatures that guard the <laughs> the abilities thing with puzzles. Anyway, it's pretty cool ending area. We'll get to the that part. Yeah. So I felt the story was all right. I mean, it's not good. Right. It's not fantastic, but it's not horrible. So I know either. we never do objective numbers, but <laughs> let's say out of 10, what would you rate the story? Caleb Craig out of 10, just the story. Uh, now 10 is metal gear solid three. I've never played. Metal okay, gear solid fuck. Three. That's probably is... the best story I've ever seen in a video game. Oh, I can't. Uncharted 2 is really awesome. We right. haven't played that. We'll say Uncharted 2 okay. for you. <laughs> if it's yeah. going off Uncharted 2. Oh, Bioshock Infinite is also really amazing. Yeah, but shitty story would be no story at all, so Mario. Mario so is that'd a be story? One. No, that'd be go save the princess. That's the only thing that happens. From Bowser. And the princess He's isn't a dick. here. <laughs> Mario's one. Okay, Mario is one. Bioshock Infinite is ten for you. Or uh, Uncharted 2. I really like Mario, though. Don't worry. Yeah. About it. It's a fun game. Uh, it's a fun game, but not a good story. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not story driven at yeah, all. Some of them are. They're mostly. Sort of. fun. What would you ra- shut up, Caleb? You know what I'm talking. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers <laughs> on the on the Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> that still had a story. Um, What's your I would story. What? What would you rate this one? Probably like a three and a half. A three and a half. <laughs> You're brutal. I am. It's it's not that great. <laughs> if I'm basing it upon every game that I've ever played, I'd give it a six. I'd say. I thought it was pretty good storytelling for a video game. Um, but maybe not for a Final Fantasy. I think yeah. for a Final Fantasy, it's pretty middle ground. Okay. Yeah, I'd give it a five. Give it a five. Okay. Mm-hmm. So not great, not horrible. But. Not great, not horrible. I think there is reasons for people to like the story. Yeah. I think it has to do with, you know, probably connection with with Squall, the love story that isn't real. I mean, besides Final Fantasy X and maybe Seven, isn't really present in the other Final Fantasy games. And um, I, th- I don't know. I think it's the characters that people really connect to. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's why there's so much fan fiction on this fucking game. Yeah, I mean, there are <laughs> there are plot holes that are giant in the within the story itself. So that's why it brings it down for me. It's not that the characters aren't good or anything. It's that the story, there's so many issues. Well, like, what about this? And, like, there's nothing that I can make 
sense of magic well, there, there is a lot yeah the magic barrier the fact that they knew each other for years and yes. just didn't know i felt like that was even the first time i played the like, game how i was would like that, that plot not twist is really that. stretching it yeah. Yeah, how would sid not like tell them they, is. Sid is like their principal and also cor- kind of their dad. Like, <laughs> why the fuck would he not mention this to them? I don't know. Maybe he just assumed they remember. And maybe, like, yeah. Maybe it was something that he's like, why don't they hang out anymore? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he didn't want to make an issue of it. Uh, maybe they're maybe like, every he single. He didn't per- see that like Quistus was like fawning over Squall as his teacher, and she's like, he he didn't think to be like, he should probably probably stop that. They're not brother and sister. Well, I know, but like she's still like his teacher. It's like unethical yeah, she's in a like way. A year older than him. Yeah, like it's nothing. Come on. It's still like unethical yeah. as far as teacher student yeah, relations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know the laws and what is the planet's name? I don't think they there have a no name for the planet. Name in this one. It's, it's just a place. Garden Law. Balam Law. We don't know. So. <laughs> Balam Law. We can't judge them. Yeah. Blam <laughs> it's like that Ba Ba Bla guy from. Uh, I don't okay. So let's get to where I think the game is super flawed uh, <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> The game, so junction system, battle system, um, leveling up, uh, controls, I guess, if you want to get into that, uh, mini games, whatever. Gameplay. Caleb uh, Schweiss, let's have you start. All right, so with Final Fantasy VIII, I felt the gameplay was great in some parts and quite lackluster in others. Um, the battles themselves, I really enjoyed. I liked fighting in the game. I really loved you know i i never turned the manual gunblade thing on i used it myself i did it you did the auto trigger or not the auto trigger the no i I guess yeah i did the opposite of what i just said manual i had manual on because i thought that was fun i thought that was a cool little mini game and then you know i kind of tested myself you know it's really easy it's nothing crazy but to to do that and i i enjoyed the fights and the fact that i played this game Basically, as an endless boss fight was awesome. Yeah, because you're trying not to level up, so you're trying to stay away from uh, right. random enemies. Right. Yeah. So when I got random enemies, when the reason why it took me so long to beat this game, it was like I was like 30 hours by the time I finished, like 36. Oh, wow. I did everything except for Doom Train though. Uh, before I went to finish the game though, mm-hmm. but uh, one of the reasons why it took so long is because. I was leveling up the AP kind of unnecessarily, like I could have got it without doing this, but I would go into fights, turn enemies into cards, and get the AP instead of getting the experience to not level. And those battles, not so much fun. Not 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 so great, because like, the card is random, I could get them down to 1 HP, and it still wouldn't card them. Sometimes I'd card them at full health. It's a mess. It's random. Mm-hmm. That part was... The battles, the endless boss fight was awesome. But the junction system was pretty flawed, but at the same time allowed for some awesome shit to take place, like some you know level ten squall doing five thousand damage with Ultima. Mm-hmm. It, that's pretty sweet. It is a broken system, and I did exploit it, which I'm not ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> and that was good. Okay. And the limits, I'm kind of torn on because the ultimate limit system for me, which we discussed. I think a couple episodes ago where we talked about our favorite limit break. I think it was last episode. Was it last episode? I think it might have been. Okay. I like tens where you kind of get it from, you choose what area you get it from based on the character. Yeah. With eight, I really liked the limit breaks. 10% or less on the limit breaks. Yeah. 10% of your health, I think. And you have to, ran- it randomly shows up too. The f- less health you have, the more often it shows up. Right. But that part I thought was really dumb. I thought it was dumb that I had one hp and i wasn't able to use my limit break i'm like there's you just seriously press back over and over again and yeah you up. do but sometimes there were times when i had very little left that i was mashing circle endlessly and there was no limit and i'm like dude I, i've never had that problem i had it only once in that game okay i was i think it was when i was fighting the tone berries i was like god let me do the limit i don't <laughs> want to do zells it takes too long <laughs> Zell's is easy to exploit, though. It yeah, is. his is, but it's two Zell combo wasn't moves. doing damage. It's like five. Well, it's really just two. If you yeah, just if you, two if you them, spam two of them, it does a lot of damage. It's true, but I had most of the damage on Squall. But, so the limits, I'm, I'm a fan of the breaks themselves, not necessarily the system to get them. And I guess that's really it. I mean, the junction system and the battles. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I kind of like the... 
it being like an endless boss battle too like it uh it really added something unique to eight's gameplay that you didn't have to fight any many enemies and so you didn't really have any of those annoying moments where like you're just walking along and you have to fight like a thousand battles until you get to like the last boss like or any the boss final of the area. dungeon of any yeah other final like fantasy. it's insanity <laughs> but then like the like only fighting bosses was actually kind of awesome yeah but uh, the, as far as the junction system goes, I now that is an optional thing. You can, of course, play the game the bullshit way, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> which is fighting everything in between, getting yeah. really high leveled up, and then of course you do have random enemies, and it plays just like any other Final Fantasy. It just gets more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as uh, the junction system, it, it could have been better, in my opinion. Okay. Like. Uh, he could have gotten magic from the GFs, just like in 6, and that would have been awesome. But instead, like, you draw magic, and it's that's a pain in the ass to just do. It's true. Like, even, Let's use ma- even with magic booster on the... Uh, even with magic booster, you still gotta go around, like, the islands. Magic the- booster, for those who don't know, is a, is a thing where it gives you, like, 100 of very basic magic in the steam yeah. version of the game and, and yeah in the so beginning that you don't so have, that you have to spend to... two hours drawing basic magic at the beginning of the game. yeah and so you can just basically get all the magic that you need from the bosses and then the except the, for good the attack magic. Points. you have to get those later on yeah you have to get those from the islands of heaven and hell anyway yeah. but and i use magic booster on my playthrough yeah i did too because you know save some time but uh <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Junction's system could have been better. Um, I felt like the GFs could have been more useful. Because you don't use them, like, at all in that game. And you can't turn off, like, their uh, cutscenes. Did you actually summon any of the GFs? I did not in this playthrough. Okay. I, I thought about it, but then I was like, no. <laughs> I did summon Diablos because one of the guys in Ultimacia's castle is really weak to him. And I, which, it, was which the, guy? it was the one that had like a billion health and whenever you attacked was it the him, red it was giant like, guy yeah it was red giant. Yeah. dude he has demi on him you can draw and cast that yeah. okay and it does he, a lot like that's I what i told demi. caleb to do and he kept doing it it did, did like max damage i didn't know he had demi yeah, yeah he has wow, demi i should have used that it was anyway, it was really Diablos useful did a lot of damage <laughs> Nice. Um, so I kept using it on, on Red Giant, but I used uh, I used Shiva a couple times, and then Ifrit in one ba- battle against the Oil Boil guys. They're like these dudes. Uh, when you go underneath the garden and you're go- gonna go fight Norg, they're like these these fuckers that come out of the water. They're insane. Like they were really hard for me. I couldn't just basic attack them because their status so effects hard. were through the roof. So I just kept Kevin. Uh, kept having to spam the summons just to get through it that was when i was weak on magic so was yeah, the first time point. i played through this game of course i learned that the summons did so much damage which they do at the very beginning of the game. yeah it seems like they do a shitload of damage uh and so the first the very first time this was years ago um i would use the summons a lot i get so bored at the cutscene. Yeah. um but this time around it's like summons are useless uh, except for junctioning them and junctioning magic they're almost completely useless they, in this game. Yeah, they're... I wish it was kind of like in 10 where you get to play as him for a little bit. Because, like, yeah. there's I no point for them to have any... 10's is the only one that you do that. Yeah, though. like, and that's pretty it's awesome. 13, that's I one guess. thing that I really, really like about 10. But, like, in uh, 8, they have HP for the GFs for no reason other than to be, like, a meat shield as you take yeah, two turns that's what to I summon used them. As. Like, that's... Uh, it's yeah, re- that's a good point. Yeah, that's what I used yeah. them as a lot of times. Could be useful. Yeah, but then you end up doing less damage than you could have, and in those two turns that it takes to summon them, you could have attacked with way more damage. Not against the oil oil guys, because I was blind. If you have doing, fire like, junction damage. to your attack like you didn't do because <laughs> you didn't realize that you could do that. No, I did. It well, didn't do... I was still didn't blinded. You that much trouble also, on the oil oils? Oh, yeah, that's right. You didn't know about he your... F- uh, he forgot that he could junction to his ability stats, so he didn't have the plus 60 strength that he had. Had. Wow. So yeah, he could have demolished him way faster, but he had to keep summoning Ifrit instead. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it <laughs> would. Agree, and then useless. if you had fire attached to your elemental attack, they really get destroyed. So, and I think they have fire as a spell that you can draw from them. So if you cast that too, it's it does a good amount of damage. But yeah, like the other like meat shields, it's not useful because like you could do more damage in the attacks that in between the time to summon them, that, and then the cutscenes waste time too. 
So, well, I like as you two have both said, junction system. It's way too exploitable. Yeah, uh, the junction system is for those who are really confused and have never played eight before or didn't play it right. Um, <laughs> you junction certain magic to certain stats that you have, and based upon the GF, uh, it allows you to junction it to you know your hit points or your strength or your you know whatever. Um, and so you can use that so that you you go draw magic instead of having magic. You can draw magic and you know amounts yeah. up to a hundred and based upon how many of those magic you have the the stat is so much better or worse um and based upon what type of magic on certain stats it also affects it differently that way uh that is an interesting idea for a system it is. i think and if it didn't do so much if it didn't have so much of an effect on your stats i think it would be an interest like a good system to have yeah like I if, don't, the, if the stat boosts were just lesser <laughs> if the stat boosts were like if you only needed like at least one for the thing to take effect i think that would have been better sure like because having a hundred of them like to super increase your stats is ridiculous and like them having uh multiple levels of spells anyway that would have just been better to like if you had like a few fires to just attach it on either that or i think what would have fixed the game as far as the junction system is concerned it's let's say fuck leveling just junction yeah so they increase the the difficulty of the enemies later down the line regardless yeah, because you'd get level. the higher level magic anyway. Yeah, right. So you would then work on getting your the whatever magic you need in the world, and you know you can play the cards if you want, or you can. Um, I think you should be able to buy draw... and sell magic. Yeah, that yeah, would, that be, would nice. be nice. One yeah. thing that really bugged me that I just barely thought of is that you can't get rid of the spells that you have. Like if you have a uh, like a you bunch of useless spells, like a hundred scans. Else. Well, I know you can get rid. Of, you can give them to somebody else, but like you you could have like a hundred scans or whatever, and you don't need them anymore. And you want them to have like a, a you want to have. Well, I know, but like if you want to have That's like really annoying because I wanted scans, <laughs> so don't say you know, scans are useless. <laughs> well, if if you like you have a spell that you don't want anymore, like level one. Sp- uh, fire when you're like way ahead in sure, the game. Yeah, like there's you don't no need, there's no reason it, to yeah. even have it anymore, but you can't get rid of it. You have to like do this ridiculous process of just trading it to somebody else in order to make space. I thought that was really dumb and that you should have been able to just I only ever had problems with that right at the end of the game. Well, well before we go f- beyond that, I actually forgot to bring that up while I was talking about the my portion of the gameplay. And that really bothers me in this game, that you have these you're magics. Limited. Yeah, you're no, not that you're limited. That I have to keep playing tradesies all fucking game with these magics. Oh yeah, because I was switched kind of to annoying. this party and I have to spend, I have to switch everything directly over. But John the problem is, just one button. Right. <laughs> but the problem with that is, if I if it's uh, separated in a way like I I tried to tactically break the party up so i had quistus as my main party but then i threw her in the gimp party if i do junction exchange it'll pull all of the shit from quistus and give it to the other person but then i'll get the stuff from that person so it does an exact swap so i'll lose everything that i had on quistus and have to pull it off the other guy and then put it on quistus again i knew how to manipulate it i was fine with it, it just bothers me that okay. i hate it when they split up games like that and then it's really stupid that you can't use an item without having a gf equipped well i I think yeah, the junction system dumb. is a good idea, wasn't executed well, was rushed. That's what I think. Yeah. And the idea of having your enemies level up with you, I know that the there are some enemies in Final Fantasy VII that level up with you, and they were probably like, hey, let's do that for the whole fucking game. And then it just, it just makes the game too difficult if you're a regular player, I think. Yeah. If you don't know the secret... Yeah, which it seems like it is a secret because it's hard to get this information. That's why on this podcast, I'm continually broadcasting. No, they level up with you. Don't level up. Well, what's NBA. also interesting is <laughs> on forums. I was looking. Uh, some there was like a guy that asked a question that is there any way to level up your GFs without leveling up your your characters? And I think what they were asking was about the AP. Mm-hmm. And this other guy, like a bunch of people, were like, no, there's not. You have to level up also. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> 
Yeah, like, it's you don't, like you they hadn't AP. heard of the card ability. Yeah, or you, you turn them in a card or Like, the boss fights them. don't give you experience. You gotta, to, you gotta get your enemies to less than 10% health, but you can't kill them. And then use the card command on them, and you'll be able to card them. Except for bosses. You can't do that on bosses. Yeah, but you don't get XP on bosses, so it doesn't matter. Right. Some forced battles you have to go through, and it sucks because, like, on Discord... You can kill Squall, though. If you want to get that achievement in, uh, in uh, Steam, Steam <laughs> you have to kill Squall... To not get to not level up in some of those fights. Yeah, because later or Laguna, because Laguna's fucking shit goes to Squall. Yeah, yeah which is it. really dumb. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like I in like later in the game, like disc three ish. Once you do actually complete a fight, which accidentally sometimes when I was grinding for AP, Odin would come in and just fuck everything up, and I'm like, <laughs> no, no, stop. <laughs> And the thing gets cut in half, and I'm, like, holding the pieces of it. I'm like, go! Read! <laughs> I level up, like, four times. I'm like, ah, you're ruining this. So, yeah. It, it matters. Even the little standard dudes. Oh, I remember something that made me laugh. When Caleb was playing against Ult- Ultimacia, and he only grabbed, like, a few of the powers... And, like, he had gotten that special item, the, like, Phoenix Pinion, that, like, every once in a while, like, when your characters all die, they'll, like, magically revive randomly. And it happens randomly throughout the game, and it'll happen more often if you have more of those items. If you, like, use it once, then it'll, like, do that for the rest of the game. Okay. And so Caleb had that, and all of his characters died in the... In the fight with Ultimacia and it missed because he didn't have the revive ability from like fighting certain bosses I have magic I have items but I can't revive with those two things that drove me insane in the final area the final area was awesome except for that bullshit that they pulled on me like you can use your spells, except for yeah, he this couldn't, one. he couldn't use he couldn't use the revive spells or revive well, you gotta, items. You have to like, uh, you have to unlock it. And yeah, then, he had to yeah. unlock the ability to revive himself. And he's like, I wonder if I'll get this. And then he like does, and then it's like miss. And then he's yeah. like, what? And then it was like game over. And he was like super pissed. And I was like, say like one more time, Caleb. Like one more time. <laughs> like like it's like <laughs> your you. it's like your ums. It is. It is. I have a problem worse, with though. that. I think it's worse. It's like uh, I have a, a problem. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, have, man. I do just, have a, there was just a lot in that. Yeah, yeah I do have a problem with that. That, but, that uh, did bug me, but the ending area was <laughs> awesome. We can all agree on that, right? Yes. The ending area was sweet. It, it was area pretty good, was yeah. Sweet. We got a question in the question segment that has to do with that ending area. Oh, sweet. Um, I'm still talking about gameplay, though. Stop fucking cutting me off, you two. <laughs> I thought that the actual in battle shit was sweet. It, yeah, it was. It was a really well done battle system. Not junctioning, not included. GF's not included, but the fighting and everything, how to use the spells while in battle and the items. You know, it all felt so fucking streamlined and great. If you put the battle like I always do, I always put the battle speed up on max. It's a super fast battle system. I love it. And I love casting Aura on, on Squall and just using Red Zalkin over and over. And over. One thing that I really <laughs> liked about the battle system for 8 is that like you could cast any spell pretty much on every character or any enemy. Yeah. Like you, you could uh, hit like over one more time and you'd like target everybody for like a fire spell like it would do less damage but it would it would still you didn't have to have like a special ability to just be able to hit everybody you can do that for most of the final phases. seven's the only one really yeah seven it's... like you had to have seven like a special thing and i think there are time. a few other ones where you had to have certain things or like it had to be a certain, certain spell level. yeah 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 final fantasy 9 does a little something different where the battle system is really even from what i remember of final fantasy 9 now it's the one that i played the least but i did when it wants. Yeah. Um, I do remember that after the battle system of Final Fantasy VIII, that Final Fantasy IX feels clunky <laughs> and slow because the, the max battle speed for Final Fantasy IX is just so much slower than the max battle speed for Final Fantasy VIII. So that's going to be something I'm going to hit into and I'm going to be like, God damn it! <laughs> Eights was so fast and, you know, like It was flashy, really fast. Yeah. <laughs> which is all, all of Eights stuff is so flashy, you know? Except for you and fight those uh, ton berries, mm. then it's really, really slow. I guess, yeah. It's true, they're beefy. Yeah, that's true. They are They are kind of beefy. So that's how I feel about the gameplay. Junction system is, of course, a convoluted, horrible system um, <laughs> that wasn't executed the way it should have been. It, um, but the actual battles are fun. Unfortunately, you can only fight the bosses if you're trying to beat the game. 
um, in a relatively quick amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Caleb, you're the only one who did uh, a large amount of extra stuff. You did some extra stuff. I, I I only got Tonberry and Noden. I had to restart the game, and we were already behind on our schedule uh, as far as um, playing Final Fantasy VIII went before we did our review for this podcast. So I chose not to do any extra stuff. But Caleb did everything but get Doom Train, which I think I have gotten Doom Train before. You have to get some items. And yeah, that's that's really all it is, and it's an interesting um, thing to get. It's supposed but... to be amazing, but yeah, I got Eden and Bahamut. Okay, uh, I, that's one thing I really want to do. I want to kind of complete the games in right. a way because this a lot of I, I want to do that too. I just didn't this play. It was yeah, a lot of Final Fantasy is the side quests. I mean, honestly, that's a big portion of the games. So I just felt like I needed to do it, except for Doom Train. I was like, so so tell us about. Uh, how, many, how much extra stuff did you do, Caleb Gray? I just got Odin and okay. uh, Tonberry, which were fairly easy to do and in the exact same place. Odin was the one where you like move around the orbs and shit. Or was yeah. that the one... Which one's the one where the light is going off and every time you hit the light you get into a random enemy? Bahamut. Bahamut. Yeah. I remember that. That one was super annoying because you have to walk up to the thing. Tell, tell us about your extra experiences, Caleb Troy's. Well... Doing extra quests. Basically, with the extra quests for me... Um, I went through, I was kind of driving the Ragnarok in between the Islands of Heaven and Hell, and I came across the very, well, I, I kind of was like, I wonder what's in the very tip of the map, because, like, that seems like a place to hide something. And it was. There was a little island, so I was like, sweet, I'll check it out. I didn't save or anything before that, I just jumped on there. And Way I'm, to go. And then I was like, well, I'm sure there'll be a save point. And there totally wasn't, I don't think. <laughs> but, uh, and then I go down there, and it's the Cave of Bahamut, and... Uh, basically there's like this being that's speaking to you. And then there's that, there's this weird pillar of light that whenever the light shines, I think you get into fights and when it doesn't, you don't, but I didn't realize that. So I was just trying to run up to it and I just got into tons and tons and tons of fights. So I leveled up like 10 times in this place. I was like level 15. Mm -hmm. And when I left, I was like mid twenties to upper twenties. I was like, Jesus, man, I haven't even beat the game yet. And I'm already screwing myself as far as what everyone said. But uh, you get to Bahamut, and there's, like, two options. I can't remember what the text is. He's, like, asking you some weird something, thing. Some weird question. And then there's two answers, and then there's a blank answer below, which is it's bullshit. It's hidden. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, fucking... Yeah, it is bullshit. And then you select that, and then you fight Bahamut, which is awesome. And I whooped his ass and then, you know, took him. He became one with me in a <laughs> non-sexual way. Sort of. No, totally sexual. Yeah. And then uh, same area, come back, uh, you fight Eden. You basically, you have to... You fight uh, Ultima Weapon. Yeah, oh yeah. And then you, you fight, draw You Eden draw from Ultima him. Weapon from, or Eden from Ultima Weapon, which is a pretty hard fight. Like, he kicked the shit out of me. And the whole way down to this area, the enemies get harder and harder the deeper into this dungeon you get, and oh, it was tough. It's so hot, Caleb. It is. It was... <laughs> It was dank down there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and there's there's behemoths that do shit tons of damage. I'm trying to turn them into cards because I don't want to level up. And then eventually I'm like, okay, hey, fuck it, I'll level up. I can't I can't turn you into a card. You'll kill me. Kept casting <laughs> Meteor on him. Yeah, Meteor over and over. I'm like, holy hell, this is demolishing me. So I finally get down there and I save, heal up, and then Ultima Weapon. Sweet fight. Okay, he wastes everyone with one move it does like max damage it's just this laser beam thing he did that and i he had a i'm sorry he did that he wiped out basically everyone and i rezzed one person and i like rezzed squall and kept having the other person res each other and then i just renzoken the shit out of him until i killed him and Isn't then that I drew. how a lot of the bosses go in the later in the games. Just yeah, Rinzoken everybody. That's keep what I everybody did. look kind of old squall at least Rinzoken low health such a fun limit break it's like <laughs> It's, it's not cool. even really a flaw in the game. It does yeah, a lot of damage, good. too. Yeah. And that's why I did it. It's, I was doing like 7,800 each hit. And it's five, so you got five all the seven. extra summons to for Doom Train. Yeah. yeah. And so. I never used them, though. I never used Eden. I never used uh, Bahamut. I used their abilities because they're sweet. Course, yeah. But I never actually summoned them, which I regret. Cause you wanted to see what the summons look yeah, like. Yeah, because I never have. Oh, Eden's supposed to be able to break the damage limit, too. Yeah. Which is really yeah. yeah if you if, if when Eden is like maxed out and like the highest level possible, I think she can break the max damage With limit boost, over like thirty two thousand damage. I've sweet. seen, which is a substantial amount. That's pretty fucking sweet. 
but I can do that in everyone's oak and easily. Hey guys, sorry for cutting in. I know this is kind of rude of me, but uh, we had to split the episode into two so that it would save a space on our Lipson account and so that you guys could have two great Final Fantasy VIII review episodes. Stay tuned next week for the second half of our review where we talk about the design of the game, the music, and of course we got questions and the legacy, all this other shit about Final Fantasy VIII. So please stay tuned for that next week. Uh, once again, sorry. Sorry for splitting up the episode, but, you know, just had to be done. Anyway, guys, enjoy the grind. We'll see you next week with part two of Final Fantasy VIII. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show was produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.